If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Dun, 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 dun. Dude, current events, we're dropping you for like 56 minutes? 56 <laughs> minutes Damn. of current events and introductory conversation. Did you preach at the beginning or was it in the middle? Uh, it was around the We felt like beginning. talking a lot. It was time. fun. It was fun. We talk about the changes of priorities and tastes as you age. Oh. Yeah, I like wearing- Not uh, food, more like uh, things that you're into. Yeah, yeah I, like, say. I like wearing white uh, briefs now. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Tidy whities. Yeah. Uh, we talk about the importance of dental health, and believe it or not, what? it's connection. Right. Could your gums be fucking your tummy up? Your gut mm. health. This was a sal speculation uh, moment. I bet you mm. I'm right. We yeah. talked about your two selves. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss that part. It talk. I talk about your tyrannical dictator that you create within yourself. And we talk about creating lasting change. We also mentioned some interesting current events. The printing of guns. It's here. What? It's here. I'm scared. You can download a gun now. Gun control my ass. Good luck banning those. We talk about meatball theft. (laughs) 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 Ah, Just, you know, some knowledge I decided to bring to the game. Hey, I would do this. And we talk about self-defense. We also mentioned some of our sponsors. Now, we mentioned Organifi. Monster? We have Monster now as a sponsor? We monster them. I hope not. My tongue got lazy right there. We mentioned some of our sponsors. Now, we are sponsored by Organifi. I talk about their gold juice and its anti-inflammatory properties. You can go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code Mind pump. That's Organifi spelled O R G A N I F I. That was S H O P. This is an incredible commercial you did too. I didn't even see this one coming. Yeah. Right? This, when you did this one, I was like, "Holy shit!" I did not know he was going to do a commercial. It was magic. Like that. Like, right around the back. Okay. It was yeah. magic. Enter the code Mind Pump. You will get a discount. Adam talks about the cauliflower pizza crust. Uh, by the way, these cauliflower pizza crusts are made with an entire head of cauliflower per crust. There's only what five ingredients. Yeah. Great macros. Uh, if you go to Cauliflower Foods, that's Bomb. Cali is in California. They've mastered it. Get on the jalapeno ones. C-A-L-I-F-L-O-U-R, so flowerfoods.com. Enter the code Mind Pump. You get a discount. By the way, if you go to the show notes on our website- Everything Media, is on there. Mindpumpmedia.com. The show notes show you what we talk about throughout the entire episode. So if you're one of those people that likes to fast forward or- Yeah, I like details, like highlighted in bullet points. Just go to mindpumpmedia.com. Check out the show notes. Then we get into the questions. The first question was- We've talked a lot about post-workout eating, but are there any benefits to fasting after a workout? So like, what if you waited a few hours after your workout? Are there any benefits? You'll be surprised. There actually are some. Find Mm. out in this episode. Then we talked about, uh, somebody asked us, you know, if the body adapts so quickly, why why aren't humans adapting and evolving to be able to utilize highly processed foods? Like, how long is it going to take before... Eating pop tarts and frozen pizza is good for us. <laughs> yeah, we're just not letting these weak people. We die. need to get we need to get the bots to fight it. That's the only chance. that's the only help. That's it. Then somebody asked us, "What is the correlation between fitness success and business success? And is, is there, there one? Is there a correlation? Uh, uh, the answer, yes and no. But we have a good conversation, so listen to this episode. And finally, if we get big enough, not muscular wise, we're already as big as we want to be." especially Justin's glutes. Yeah. If our show gets big enough, how are we going to maintain our authenticity? I think this person is saying- Like, is are we going to go straight to hookers and blow? Exactly. <laughs> is that going to happen? <laughs> is that going to happen? No. Already has happened. <laughs> just kidding. We got it out of the way. <laughs> just, just so you guys know. That's right. <laughs> totally joking. Huh. Sorry, honey. Uh, also, look, we got a lot of new listeners. I'm going to break some stuff down for you. <clears throat> if you're interested in raw strength and size- MAPS Anabolic is the program for you. If you're interested in sculpting your physique like a bodybuilder, shaping your body like a bikini competitor, MAPS Aesthetic is the program for you. If you're interested in functional mobility and athleticism, well, that's MAPS Performance. If you're somebody who likes to work out without equipment, you like to work out with body weight and at home, well, that's MAPS Anywhere. And if you have pain or dysfunction in your joints and in your body, the two programs for you are or MAPS Prime, Prime, Prime Pro, or MAPS Prime Pro. And we also offer bundles where we combine them together. So for example, I'll give you an example. The Sexy Athlete Bundle combines MAPS Aesthetic and MAPS Performance. If you enroll in any bundle, we have a lot more than just that, 
you will get free access to our private forum. There's over 2,000 people on the forum. What's that? Is this the sale we're doing all month? That's it. Oh. Uh, so March is here. Let's it. get some more in the forum. You got uh, personal trainers on there, fitness enthusiasts, doctors, nurses. You've got competitors on there. And of course, me, Adam, and Justin. Oh, we got, on a, there. We got who else? We got we got Mike, uh, Doctor Mike Ruscio in there. You got uh, Doctor Brink in there. You've got Doctor Jordan Shallow in there. You've got uh, got uh, Aria Safai is in there. Jordan Har- right. Jordan Harbinger in there. You got we got a ton of fucking- you got some cool celebrities in there. You can interact with them, ask people questions. You can tag us, ask us questions. Anyway, Robert Oberst. Anyway, it's free. It's free with if you get in any bundle. If you enroll in any bundle for this entire month, if you want more information, just go to mindpumpmedia.com. I was watching Bryant Gumble. I don't know if it's like getting older that now I like this. I like some of these sports shows and things that are they're more. Um, God, what's the word I'm looking for? Are you familiar? With, are you? I doubt you are. Are you, are you? I know who Bryant Gumble is, and he does real sports on HBO, and it's like kind of a. It's normally like an hour. They kind of combine like news with sports. He's like a nerdy black dude, right? Yeah, yeah, about, yeah, 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 totally, exactly, and so. I didn't really watch it much as a kid. I mean, he's been doing it forever, but I'm drawn to it now. It's kind of funny. I was trying to unpack that and figure out. You're getting old. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah I had That's that. Fe- I had that moment it's happening, of feeling that. But bro, how many? Like how- when you start listening to talk radio, or I guess now podcasts, and you don't listen to music anymore. Yeah. Like when that happened, I was like, oh. no. Okay, well, see, podcasts. Sorry, I'm getting old. Is, young people are really okay. So to- I want to tell you guys something like that. So this is something I, I'm I'm very aware of, and I make a conscious effort to to rotate. So I'll do like between audiobooks podcasting and listening to music, I make a conscious effort to never like fully consume one and not the others. Like I mm-hmm. always try and like mm-hmm. kind of rotate because they each provide different things for me sure. that yeah. I value and that, that, I, and that I enjoy. And so it's not like a, I don't want now, but I, and it makes me really appreciate it. Like, because I did really, I was as a kid, really, really into music, like big time. Yeah, like, you know, I've been I've been making an effort to try and keep that established or like look for new bands, new new sounds and stuff. But at the same time, I'm so motivated to you know listen to audio books right now. I'm like really diving into that. So. I'll, I'll tell you what I noticed uh, with music is that so you know Jessica's eight years younger than me, right? So she's that's a decent. It's not a huge age gap, but it's enough for me to notice the difference between. Someone What'd you say? What's the difference? Eight, eight, eight years. Eight years. So oh, I can yeah. tell. It's, That's it, significant. It'll yeah. show you the difference between you know younger and older. I didn't older. realize you guys were had that. I, know, I didn't for, either. For yeah. some reason, I mean, because she's she's ma- very mature. She's very mature. Yeah. Oh, she's age. super super wise. Yeah. She's, she's always been that way. Apparently, her family says that when she was like six, she'd have these like really deep conversations. So it's what attracted me most to her. Anyway, I'll come home sometimes, and she'll be cooking or doing something. And she'll have the music on, and it's just fucking loud. Like it's super loud. And I'll walk in, and I'll be like. I can't, like, it's too loud. Can we turn it down a little bit? <laughs> and I used to be that Ow, way, dude. It hurts my ears. I used to be that way when did I was you, a did kid. You have a, did you have a stereo system in your car ever? Yeah, dude. I used to have fucking subwoofers. And I used to love that. Oh my now God. when I listen to music, it's like- Did you check yourself like mentally? Like, oh my God, did I just say that? Totally. To- yeah. Even in the car, she'll want to turn it up and I'll, I'll want to turn it down and be like- mm. I can't enjoy it. It's too loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. That's it's sad. Help, Sal. Dude, tell me that doesn't happen uh, to you. It does. I catch my, like, I'm with Justin, though. I, I, yeah. I have these moments, and I kind of check myself, yeah. you know? I'm, try, got, I'm trying to push it off. Right. Yeah, as I think, much as I can. I think, though, it's not. Like, I got I got annoyed by one of uh, my nephews, Katrina's uh, nephew, because we were, we were all, they always want to drink and party, and I forget what it's like to be 21 to 24, and, like, that's what you're doing. Like, that's yeah. all you're, like. You just have so much you look energy at it, like, to do lame. it. Yeah. yeah. And they, like, get mad at me because I don't want to take fucking shots on like, you know, Friday night at whatever time that they're <laughs> yeah, hanging out. Because right? they're dude, not shots. They're not, yeah. they're not in, in recovering. General. Right. Like, like yeah. I don't like, want to get fucked up anymore. Dude. dude it, <laughs> what appeal is left there? But Bro, I, th- I check shots. myself and I go, I can't be mad at them because now I sound like a fucking old pain in the ass. I can't, I, I can't get down. Yeah, and have but some why do these things happen? Yeah. Your body changes. Like for sure. If I go and party with shots, it's going to take me a decent four or five days worth of recovery. Uh, especially Jaeger. And I got to work. Jaeger so a lot of these 20 year olds, you don't got to work, dude. You can just fucking sleep in, do whatever. My kids, they're not hung over like I am. So, you know, 7 a.m., they're up ready to fucking rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope they're not. It's over, just not. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know what? That's the other idea. That's another idea, right? Like, oh, yeah. you know what? Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to wake up early tomorrow because the kids. Yeah. That changed everything. With me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It changed everything. Don't you? Dude. I kind of getting circling back to the whole me getting back to listening to all these and rotating and I feel like it's it feeds your soul in a sense and I and I yeah. wonder if like 
this is part of the process of dying is that people just you start to <laughs> wow. like, no listen listen like that, I'm stick, I'm sticking with that it, and it starts at one point where you start letting go of these things that that do feed you and and let thing and then we make this excuse of oh it's just not a priority anymore but when you think back like the, those there's a lot of joy or a lot of things that came from those things that you've kind of let go or you no longer do anymore I think it depends I think it depends on if you start to Part of it is you if things feed you differently. You're, you're a different person. Well, I right? believe that. I yeah. believe your priorities shift. I mean, we know this. So, I mean, on a cellular level, we have a whole different human within seven years. Yeah. yeah. So and and I and it's kind of funny how that works because if you look back, you seven years ago was really different than you probably three more. And and the, that years kind of makes sense. Yeah. You know? But like, there's the emo- yeah. there's also the emotional change in growth. Like I, I could I could think back and think of one or two year periods where I was drastically different in a short period of time because of some kind of an event Mm -hmm. or life changing something or realization I had. So you just grow and change. And like, I didn't appreciate, like I used to love going into busy areas with lots of people. And I still enjoy that. Don't get me wrong. It's still fun. But now I appreciate going, being around less people Mm -hmm. differently and call it what you will. I just think when you're younger, you find excitement in new things. And then when you get older, you, yeah. you, I, I think you just become I th- I wiser. Think, I don't know. Well, more comfortable it's with not your just own wiser. skin. I think so. you refine your taste. Mm-hmm. That's probably true. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you find out like certain things that that feed the soul or feed what right. you your your things that you want. Well, think about it this way: when you're a 20 year old kid, you just want to have a lot of sex. Yeah. Right. You're working your way through all the novelties. Yeah. You just want to have a lot of sex, right? So much to the point that almost everything that you do throughout the week kind of revolves around just that. having a lot of yeah. sex, right, like right, right, volume, right. volume of sex. Like then when you're when you're in your 30s, like you and, go for the for the for the hogging. Yeah. Then when you go for the <laughs> sex, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Sometimes. Wow, wow, <laughs> hogging. Yeah. I haven't heard that term in a long yeah. time. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. It happens. That's uh, that's yeah. last resort. Yeah. But when you then when you hit your 30s and 40s, it's like you don't necessarily want just a bunch of sex. You want really good sex. quality. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't. I might not want to like get smashed a lot now. But I, but when I do drink, I want quality. Like I want to like it needs to be meaning, not just me getting smashed. I want to just who I'm with, what I'm drinking, the you know the the reasoning behind it changes. So I guess you're right. You just refine, right? You know, you just refine your taste, dude. So le- so yesterday, this happens to me every once in a while. Uh, I was sitting there and I just started thinking, and sometimes I get into these states of mind where I get just this just flight of ideas, and many of them seem like breakthrough to me and it just happens like I'll be in the state of mind and I'll get one and I'll fucking write down should we be sharing this on air absolutely <laughs> okay. Why? what do you think I'm talking about I don't know you're gonna give some brilliant yeah, idea right away should we talk about this let's first let's not monetize this <laughs> yeah. yeah. oh no 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 no. this isn't something <laughs> it's just a concept oh man it's just a yeah. concept so I was thinking about um, the process of developing food intolerances leaky gut syndrome and for for the listeners who may not know how that works is when in the context of inflammation, the gut, the 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 junctions between the cells of the gut that separate your you from what is inside or inside your gut, which by the way is not really in your body until it goes goes through the wall, cell wall and it gets absorbed. That cell wall, when it's inflamed, the junctions space out, and then food particles or molecules or protein particles pass through when they're not supposed to. And your body recognizes those as foreign invaders, develops antibodies, and now you have a food intolerance. And this is why. All of a sudden, foods that you could normally eat, you now can't digest them anymore. They bother you. Rejects it. Right. So that's what leaky gut syndrome or the medical term is, uh, intestinal wall hyperpermeability. Well, so well, how, how common do you think this is? Because I, we were talking yesterday with Dr. Molly, and I, we kind of asked this a little bit. Like, How common do you think that it is for people to have leaky gut, some sort of a leaky gut syndrome? I think in the, uh, in the context of, of modern lifestyle, it's probably very common it's probably way more common than people realize it is in, yeah in, like in various had, forms if, right because it's going to show up in, in different forms that's right if we had to put a percentage on it what would you guesstimate i mean just based off of the experience God, of people think that about we've the average with. person you've worked with think about um some of the issues that they've that you've worked with them through that maybe you weren't aware of that could be connected to poor gut health that i 100 percent believe more than half Oh, I think it's. I think it. I think it's more than that. I think it's a lot more than that, especially as you get older, because it's just more time. Right. You know, like try find me a thirty year old who now can't eat a food that they used to be able to eat ten years ago. You know what I mean? It's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. I no. bet you most people can po- can point to one thing. Now find me someone that's not that's free of some type of mild 
autoimmune type issue, whether it be a skin issue, digestive issue. And then tell me how many are suffering from some of these things and don't realize how their body's expressing it because it's different than what everybody else they've heard. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's way more common than we realize. Unfortunately, we don't necessarily have a test for it until the symptoms show up. And it's inside your body, so it's not like your skin where I can look at my skin and be like, oh shit, my skin's inflamed. Like we can't really tell what that looks like in the gut unless it's like really uh, extreme, right? So, so, I was, so I was thinking about this and I'm like, huh. The digestive process begins uh, in the mouth, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And I know that, and there are studies that show this, that if you have bad oral health, let's say you have your gums bleed, mm. which is actually quite common. Mm-hmm. It's actually quite common that people have gums that may bleed when they brush their teeth or when they floss. They've actually shown that if you have some type of dent of gum disease, even mild, that it's strongly correlated to heart disease. And they think it's because bacteria travels through the, the gums into the body, can get to the heart, cause inflammation of the heart, cause, mm. right? So now I'm thinking, holy fuck. Wow. You're eating food in the context of poor oral health. You could also be creating food intolerances just through your mouth. Oh yeah, through the bacteria that's already like sitting dormant, you know, within your teeth. Bacteria or food. Did you run that by like uh, Doctor Ruscio? Do you know? That's no, I didn't run it by anybody. Yeah, this was just a thought that I was having because I'm thinking, well, well, if you're eating food and you're chewing on food, and you know, it doesn't have to even go down into your stomach. If you have poor oral health and you have gums that kind of bleed a little bit or whatever that food could or particles could get into your bloodstream and your body could develop an immune reaction to I it. I wonder what the likelihood of that is, though. Yeah. I, th- I think it might be high. I'm guessing. I mean, I'm totally, this again, speculating, but... That would be a great question for Mike. I feel like most dentists I've, I've known are, like, super healthy. You know, like, yeah. they, they really have, like, I don't know if, if, if they, they've like very forward thinking and like most of them have are pretty familiar with functional medicine and everything else. The ones that I've talked to. I know. Honest. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to, I'm trying to well, think about this way. Dentists that I know that. Yeah. I mean, think about this way. Like think of something. I that, definitely don't it's know. A, like, vi- it is a very like crucial part of well, your health. Well, think about this way. If think of something you're allergic to normally that you don't eat, like let's like pollen, right? Mm-hmm. You breathe in pollen. It causes, an, uh, you know, uh, allergies to you. Imagine if you took some of that pollen and you like rubbed it in a, in an open sore, like you might create a, a, a much worse immune reaction. In fact, I, you probably would, I would assume, right? No, I get, I, I get break out in like hives and stuff when like, I'll get all this like kind of red rash. So I'm allergic to pollen. Yeah. And when it gets, when it gets on the dogs and that's why I have to bathe them every week hmm. because if they, if I go two weeks without bathing them, they've got so much pollen on them that just from me petting them, I break out in rashes and stuff. So, like, so dental health is extremely important for just total health, which I knew that already in, in, yeah. in regards to heart health because there's already been studies on that. But in terms of developing food intolerances, it's important. And here's the other side of it too. What contributes to good oral health? Well, there's the obvious, right? Brush your teeth, floss, all that other shit. But the, un- the, the not so obvious contributes very, tr- very, very largely to oral health, and that's your diet. A lot of people don't realize just how much- And dental dams. Your di- <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Just how much <laughs> your diet contributes to uh, your oral health. So like- if your um, microbiome in your mouth is off, you're going to get lots of cavities and you're going to get some gum disease and stuff like that. And that's from just your, you know, what you eat, you know, normally. And then there's a, a doctor, I um, can't remember his name now. Uh, uh, what's that website, Doug, with... Uh, uh, Weston Price. Thank you. Mm. So Weston Price, are you guys familiar with, with Dr. Weston Price? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so he was a dentist that traveled the world and he documented people's teeth around the world and then he documented hunter gatherers modern hunter gatherers teeth and he was from modern western you know societies and he dealt with you know cavities and braces and i mean the amount of kids that need braces in modern western societies is pretty high mm-hmm. especially when you consider before braces were invented how the fuck did that work like you know if your teeth are bad enough that would probably take away your ability to survive and eat and cavities would could for sure kill you if you're a caveman like you can't fix that if it becomes an infection that can go up into your sinus it's got a lot of problems mm. you know having to remove wisdom teeth as often as we do so he went in to these uh these modern hunter gatherers 
And he took pictures of their teeth because he was fucking blown away that everybody had super straight teeth. Mm -hmm. All their teeth fit. Nobody had a cavity. He couldn't believe it. They were not brushing their teeth. Yeah, it's the Western diet that's created all this. Totally. They weren't brushing their teeth. They didn't do any of the modern practices of keeping oral health. And yet they had these like, and he took all their pictures. He wrote a book on it. And you could see like these really nice teeth. My dad uh, did not brush his teeth as he was poor. Didn't brush his teeth as a kid. They didn't, couldn't afford toothbrushes. And well, I used to ask him, like, how the fuck did you clean your teeth? He's like, oh, I just used my finger and wipe my teeth. <laughs> didn't, didn't brush his teeth. Didn't go to a dentist until he was in his mid-20s. For the first time, he went to a dentist here in America. Went to the dentist, and they could not believe that he didn't, he'd never been to a dentist. Because my dad's never had a cavity, and he's got the straightest teeth you've ever seen. And he ate, you know, he was poor, and so his family, they ate, you know, like meat and legumes and fruits and vegetables and things that they grew and he had just excellent teeth. it's kind of interesting right it's interesting how this yeah. all these factors add up so i was just thinking about that i thought gee i wonder how many of these uh, autoimmune issues we can cause just because we also have shitty like mouth health yeah and then we eat foods and that goes doesn't it seem like everything that we seek as far as pleasure wise we have to make this deal with ourselves Totally. <laughs> when you think yeah. about that, Bro. like the, this whole thing of like seeking after pleasure, it's like and, and chasing these things that we want to, and it's like what it, whatever it's feeding, there's a price right. that it pays, and are you willing to take that? And is it once or twice? Not a big deal, but is it something I do on a regular basis? It could fuck me up. So this lead, so that uh, it's almost like you know exactly what I'm talking about. So that leads me to the next thought that I had. Um, and you're right. Whenever you're sacrificing for something for the future. So like, okay, right now I'm going to work out so that I'm healthier tomorrow. Or right now I'm not going to eat this cake so I'm healthy tomorrow. What you're doing is you're you're making a deal with with your present self for your future self, right? Mm-hmm. That's psychologically speaking, that's exactly what you're doing. So you're putting hay in the barn. Yeah, it's exactly what you're doing. So if I eat this cake right now, my present self is going to really fucking enjoy this. But my future self is not going to like this so much. I'm going to feel bad. And if I do this enough time, I'm going to become unhealthy, obese, and all these other things. So you're always bargaining between your future and your present self. So I'm, I was thinking about, and Dr. Jordan Peterson talks about this in his book, 12 Rules, and I thought it was absolutely brilliant that uh, you know that's the origin of sacrifice. Like the origin of, if you look at religions, they sacrificed animals in the ancient times. And really it's a very primitive way of doing that, right? You're sacrificing the now for later, and in their eyes, they're doing it for God. But in the reality, if you're if you're planning and you're smart enough to be able to have an extra animal to sacrifice, you're probably going to do better off mm-hmm. later on, which is probably why that practice lasted for, for thousands of years. So I'm thinking about this, and then I'm thinking about how tough it is for people to, quote, unquote, stick with a diet or stick with an exercise program. And I'm thinking about this, and I, I'm starting to realize that this is how complicated we are as humans. Like this is the bane of human consciousness. We create these separate parts of ourselves that we have debates and discussions with. Like there's two parts of us. And if for those of you that don't fucking believe this, okay, how many times have you said this? I can't have that. Mm-hmm. I can't eat that right now. What do you mean you can't? Who's making you, forcing you to right. not? No, it's oh, like, I, I am. choose not to eat oh, that. Oh, I am forcing myself. Yeah. Who is this other you? Well- it's the future you. And here's one of the reasons why, and this is about to this is a this was a power paradigm shattering fucking moment for me last night. Literally kept me up thinking about this last night. When you're how many of you, I mean, in, in this room right now, raise your hand when you like it when someone forces you to do something. Like <laughs> nobody. Right. In fact, you force me to do anything, my instinct is to do the opposite. To, because I hate tyranny. I don't like yeah. I don't like being forced. Nobody does. This is natural. This is a natural, you know, state of being. Kids are like this, and so are adults. Like the second you're forced to do something, you don't want to do it because you don't like being forced. If you want to do something or you choose to do something, it's a totally different, totally different thought process. So I'm thinking to myself, and I'm like, wow, the reason why people have so much trouble with nutrition and exercise and discipline is because they are feeling tyrannized. They're feeling tyranny from their future self. In other words, I am not letting myself do this versus I don't want to do this. Two completely different schools of thought. So if I have a uh, if I'm at a birthday party and there's cake and I want to and I'm looking at it I'm like wow that looks really good but I can't eat it. 
I'm feeling like I myself am forcing myself to not eat it, which nobody yeah, fucking- Yeah, there's internal conflict. There. Nobody likes that. Yeah. Nobody will stay doing that for too long. At some point, you're going to rebel against the tyranny of yourself. Hmm. So really, it's realizing that, that the, the two people that, you're, that, you're, that are arguing and one is forcing the other is a false- belief it's a it's a it's a psychological phenomena that you've created within yourself because there's some value that comes with it but if that other you that you've created in your own mind starts to become uh, a dictator and starts to force you or at least you start to feel like he forces you you are not going to feel good about what you're doing and you're not going to stick to it mm. and so what you need to do and it's extremely powerful to do this and I've done this myself is rather than saying I have to do this is realize that you are not forcing anything. Yeah. The reason why you're not doing it is because you're choosing. I do that. I, I practice that all the time when I I don't want the cake. You know, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I don't want it. Makes such a big difference. Yeah, it's not. It's not that I can't have it. Like that's awful. No, like, yeah. and you know what? You know what? Who was I just talking to? Who was it that we were just hanging out with? That says the if I, if I can't, I must. Who were we just ben thinking? Pack. Oh, it was Ben. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ben, yeah, ben must have said that like five different times. Dude, think oh, about yeah. like think mantra. about all the shit that you you hate doing because you feel like you're being forced to do it. And if you just changed the paradigm of it and realize that you, you first off, you can't force yourself to do anything because it's you really. So it's not like you forcing yourself unless you were literally two different people, but you're not um, realize that there isn't, that doesn't even exist. The reality is you don't want to now think of all the shit that you hate to do because of that, think of it. Like, I hated doing shit around the house. Like, I hated it. Why? Because I felt like I was being forced. And there was a moment where I remember specifically, this was when I was married. It was towards the end of my marriage. When, uh, you know, I had a lot of, me and my wife at the time had lots of issues, lots of, there's, it goes way deep. I'm not even going to go into it because then it'll make one person look bad and all that stuff. I'm not going to do that. But one of the things that she had an issue with me was that I didn't help around the house. And I didn't want to listen to that because I had my own issues with her. And so I'm like, if you don't listen to me, I'm not going to listen to you. And this is just common when people lose communication and it turns into a bunch of bullshit. But at, towards the end, I said, okay, you know what I'm going to try? I'm going to try doing exactly what she's telling me to do. That way we get it out of the way so we can address these other issues that I find important. Because I, fi I figured she's probably in the same boat I'm at where she's not listening to me because I'm not listening to her. So I'm going to just do what she wants me to do. Now, when I did that, I did it because I wanted to, because I thought to myself, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose to do this. So then I would be washing dishes. I'd be folding laundry. And then I'd find myself enjoying it, which was very strange for me because any other time I did it before, I felt like I was being forced. I fucking hated it. Changed your purpose. Totally changed everything. And you can apply. And I, I'll tell you what, your thought process is everything when it comes to your your meaning and the quality of your life and getting shit done. Do you believe that the your greater your, the greater the sacrifice, the greater the re reward? Then, of course, yeah. It gives you. It's. I mean, it makes things worthy. Mm. What is the what is the what is the prize without the work? It's nothing. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, it's like uh, I, I've used this example so many times. Like people who win the lottery, they've done studies on these. Like these people are if they're depressed before they win that money. Two, three years later, they're depressed again mm -hmm. because there there was no value in it. It's just cash. Now, of course, if you're starving, you don't have a roof over your head, that's totally different. But a lot of these people win the lottery have those things. So then they get all this money and then they're super excited for a couple of years and they realize they're back where they were start where they were before, or sometimes worse, sometimes even worse, because they now realize that that wasn't the answer, right? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I felt that the entire time I was in school, you know, like every part of the educational process, I felt like um, you know, it was mandated and, and then I had to, I had to go in this direction. I had to learn this subject and, um, it, getting outside of that environment and then going back and revisiting a lot of topics and, and, um, studying on my own, it's been like game changer because now I want to do it, you know, now I want to pursue, um, more knowledge in that direction. And I mean, that's just, that's just something I've noticed about myself with just about everything. It's Anything. the same thing with, with cleaning. It's the same thing. Like uh, if anybody tells me to do something at one point, like there's an immediate like resistance, but you know, that's where I, too, I try to check myself on that and then try to figure out how I can, how I can make it like my own 
momentum in that direction. And so I'm not like confrontational with mm-hmm. somebody trying to tell me something because, you know, like that's that's not going to work either. No, dude, it's literally the core foundation of uh, intuitive eating, you know, if you will. Like it's the core of it. Like I'm eating this because I want to. Um, I'm not eating that because I just I don't want to. And people confuse that. They it's think- so hard though when people – People don't understand their own emotions, dude. They don't understand, like, and so they're sometimes reading the wrong signals. So I think, well, I mean, think so about that. Like, think to yourself having like, that. Le- you got to have a serious level of awareness to really be able to to unpack that, dude, break that down. Like, it, that, you it, know? it was so. It was like as clear as day to me. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, um, I, you know what? I should do this thing. I, I need to do this thing. I'm supposed to do this thing. I'm not supposed to do that thing. And then I'm thinking, like, I don't want to fucking do that. You know. You know, I, but, but I, you know, I, I have to, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, wait a minute, who's forcing me to do this? Like, who's literally forcing me? And I'm like myself, who is this other me? I'm like, it's this fictional character that I've created that is being a dictator over me. No wonder I don't want to fucking do it. Nobody wants to do anything. They're being forced. Mm-hmm. I'm like, but I created that. It's in my control. So then as soon as I killed that character and then realized well, the reason why I created that character in the first place, like think of it this way. The reason why I created this dictator in the first place that's forcing me to not eat sugar, for example, is because I see the value in not eating sugar. I see so much value in not eating sugar that I created this fictional character to force me to do it. Mm. But wait a minute, if I see so much value in it, I don't need to create this fictional dictator. You should want to. I just, I yeah. don't want to. Right. I literally don't want to. Right. So why don't I just not? I'm literally seeing like, you know how you see the, like a devil and an angel on, on your shoulder? It's fiction. That's course. But like almost like a little dictator and then a little hippie guy like, yeah, man, you can do it. It's about love. <laughs> you know, that's what I see <laughs> with you. Why do you think that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, Sal, love yourself. Yeah. You, know? you, know what? <laughs> you, yes. you deserve it. Yeah, you, you know what's funny, it, buddy? <laughs> that's been depicted in so cartoons and yeah, yeah, movies yeah. for so, so long. Oh, great yeah. and like, smart. Everybody can... Okay, so and this is what I'm getting this from the from the book. By the way, I guarantee it's because I've been reading Twelve Rules of Life because he talks about how. Of course, it's the reason why I'm on the same page as you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. No, it's, it makes, makes a lot of sense, bro. He talks about psychology a lot, right? Because he's a clinical psychologist, and he talks about how, um, like a lot of times we we will create a, uh, a, a an argument. Like when when you're thinking, what you're really doing is you're debating two different two different sides of something. That's what real thinking is, right? You're trying to process something by creating two different ends of it. And sometimes we don't really want to debate it. We want to pretend like we're debating it. So what we do is we create, there's the one side that we really want to follow, but we know we should probably think it through. So then we create another side that's weak that we know we're going to defeat. Mm. And then we do this propaganda where we- So we can just steamroll it. Yeah. And we're like, oh yeah, I thought about it. Yeah. No, you really didn't. <laughs> you really didn't do it, think about it. You just uh. pretended to- to make yourself feel the better. People like pat themselves on the back for like, oh yeah, dude, I was totally going to give money to that charity. Yeah, you know, just the thought of that like makes me feel good. Yeah, right? no. And I'm thinking like, wow, that's human consciousness. We're always creating these characters. And think about it, like how, how many times do you like talk to yourself or like you said, Justin, the, the devil and the angel. Yeah. I mean, the terminology of like listening to that voice and then there's this other voice in my head that says this and then this other voice says that. What voice you're not you're not possessed by demons. You need, you, yeah. you need to read you what I'm reading that. right now, which is how emotions are made. I know really? it'll be such a perfect follow up and where your 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 headspace is right now because it's so it's super fascinating. And I touched on it a little bit with Dr. Molly, but what you're getting into right now is a lot of what the book is because it's there's a lot of other factors that come into this because what's where that person's current headspace is at like where they're at like uh, as far as being positive or if they've got some stuff going on in their life that's got them down or they just recently got fired or they just recently got a promotion like all these things makes a difference on how they respond and react to these opportunities or things that arise and it's not always the same pathway it doesn't work that way it's not like a a to b always it's it's yeah. going to be there's always so many individual variances because we're constantly going through all these different emotions and days and spikes and ups and downs so even the same exact question or same exact possibility or the same exact opportunity is never the same because of all the other factors dude it's it's think about how cl- like imagine right and we don't appreciate just how complex the human psyche is sometimes i really i really think though i really think that sometimes we see us a problem or a situation and we're like, the answer's simple, just do this or just do that. Well, well, yeah. I mean, obviously, if people just, you know, 
they, if they're obese and they just said, oh, I'm just going to eat healthier and move more. Well, yeah, that's I guess that's the answer, but yeah. way more complex than that. Yeah, if life was just a math equation, <clears throat> we'd be doing like everything would be easy. And that's you'd know exactly like if this, then that. But it's, it's there's so many variables. And that's just yeah. it. Like it's all about this, this this duality in our minds or maybe even more than two things where we're constantly in this battle between the dictator us who's telling us what we should do and this rebellious us mm-hmm. that's saying, don't fucking tell me what to do. And it's this back and forth, back and forth. But then when you realize that you have created these fictional imaginary characters in your mind that you don't have to have two of right. them. And you're you, not chained to one of them. No. In fact, that's neither one of those is you, by the way. Yeah. The guy that's telling you to do it and the guy that's rebelling it isn't even you. The, per, the you is the one that's observing all of it. Boy, when you reach that that point, it's like you start to make friends with things that you used to hate to do or or you you know you you felt forced to do you start to make friends with it and you realize like oh like yeah i want to you know i want to do my yard work because i like the way it looks and that's it yeah. like i'm not forced to do this i just like the way it looks yeah. and when you when you make friends with it it makes everything fucking easy man it really does otherwise it's a of course man nobody wants to be forced to do anything yeah. you tell me to do anything and my instinct is to tell you to go fuck yourself. Right. right. You know what I mean? I don't care who's telling me, especially if it's It's not just fitness. It's everything too, man. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's across all boards. Well, that's why it's interesting because we've all learned that through fitness and like enjoying the process and actually like, mm-hmm. like I get excited to, to go work out and, you know, work on my body, but at the same time, like working on my house or, you know, doing the mundane shit that like, you know, will propel you forward. Uh, why don't I t- carry that same momentum? Why don't I carry that same energy into those projects? Well, this reminds me of why we started this project was that that's what's so wrong is that our industry is focusing on all the wrong things. And they have been for a really long time, you know, yeah. and it's, and we've been a part of it. We were, were a part of the problem for a really long time because that's how you, if you, that's how you made money. It's how you had to, They're if you throw the hammer of dictator ideas, like right on you. Yeah, dude. And it's, it's really not the real root cause of most of people's struggle of getting in really good shape. It's, that's not worth, it's rooted in their head. It's rooted in the, the psychological side more than anything else. And, you know, it took me a really long time and training a lot of people before I really connected those dots personally. You know, that took me a while. Oh, dude, it took me, yeah. I, towards the, it was like towards the back half of my career, I would train clients and start realizing that, wow, if I, if I do this slow enough and I do this with the right approach, uh, they all of a sudden, that, that it switches. Mm-hmm. The, the dictator starts to shrink and then it becomes, disappears. And then they switch to this, oh, I want to do this. And these were all, I mean, I wasn't training athletes. I wasn't training anybody that was hard. I had very few hardcore clients. 90% or more of my clients were people that did not have any fitness, you know, background or discipline, if you will. Yeah. These were all regular people. And I was able to, when I changed my, my approach, I haven't, look at, we've been doing Mind Pump now for three years. I haven't trained a single one of these clients for at least two years, right? That's a long time, two years without training with their trainer. Every single one of these people is still exercising, is still working out. And not all of them are training with a trainer. Some of them went to another trainer because they enjoyed doing that. Some of them said, hey, I'm going to do this on my own. And I keep in contact with them. And every once in a while, they'll send me their workout and stuff. I mean, real lifestyle changes. And it takes a while sometimes. I've, I had clients who want to lose 30 pounds. They didn't lose 30 pounds for three years. you know, And all of a sudden, they lost it. Yeah. Like for the first three years, like it just clicked. Yeah. Just, it, I've it, had so many clients like that. Right? Yeah. So I was just mind blowing to me because I'm sitting there and I'm like, wait a minute, who the fuck is telling me? Well, that's why being for them, being there for them, like matters so much more. Yeah. You know, than, than trying to uh, push them mm-hmm. and, 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 and propel them in a certain direction. They have to literally internalize it. Mm hmm. And mm-hmm. then it becomes obvious once once they go through that process. It's pretty it's pretty crazy. That's why I used to put so much uh, responsibility on on my clients, and it took me a long time to figure that piece yeah. out too. Is you know I used to, I used to be the trainer who fed right into what every client wanted, which was give me a meal plan, give me a workout, tell me what to do, mm-hmm. and yeah. I could do that. Here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go, and that was kind of like the formula. Later on in my career, it was the complete opposite. Like I did nothing. Yeah. And, and yet I was a way better trainer. And what I mean by I did nothing wasn't that I didn't literally do nothing, but I put it on them to present everything to me. Because if you really want to learn about yourself, if you really want to figure this, right, it takes work. 
I know that for sure. It's and uh, don't worry, I'm going to help you out with all the math and the hard decisions of where we go from here or there. Like I'm going to direct this ship, but you're going to be fucking moving us, yeah. you, not, you, not you, me moving you. This is it's not the other way around. So they would have to send me all their measurements, all their weights, all their stuff, and we're tracking and I'm talking them through that process because totally. I know what's going to happen within. You're three more or, like the oracle. Yeah, right. And three or four days later, they're going to do. They're going to call me up and go or say to me, Adam, oh my God, I just this happened to me. And I go, well, let's look at your food log and let's mm-hmm. see where the foods you've been eating for the last two days and let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. And, and then, oh, boom, this light bulb goes off. And like, oh, really? I didn't get fat. That's also. crazy. And uh, you, you, you have to allow people to learn. Yeah. You if, you, if you don't- You know so much information, uh, you feel like, I don't know, for some reason we feel so you know, like compelled to keep like throwing stuff at them. Right. And you haven't even given them enough time to learn. Right. It's, it, you can't- you don't really teach people anything. You're just helping them learn. <laughs> like you're, you're helping them teach themselves. Yeah. Because that's the only way you really learn is when you get it yourself, mm-hmm. right? Now, sometimes someone can present information to you that sparks that, and that's part of the trainer's job. But a big part of the trainer's job is just like helping you reveal to yourself what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Right. And you know, that's why too, for a trainer, it's uh, a huge success. Even if you can just, if you reveal one big rock for them that's it. and they, they never even see their goal. Like maybe their goal was to, like you said, lose 30 pounds, but there are so many other things, it, big rocks that they were missing in their life. For example, sleep, like how many times have you got a client before and there are, they're part of the reason why they've struggled themselves to lose this. They've already tried every diet. They've tried every workout program. They're coming to you now because they're like, they're, they're lost completely, which we always know that's a bigger project because this person has to undo a lot of the bad stuff that they've done to themselves for so long. And that sometimes takes a, a long time. And if you can just get them to create one better habit that you know will really impact their life long term, like for example, sleep, I always go there. Now it was an area that I didn't put a lot of inter- emphasis on when we first started, you know? Mm-hmm. That's why I love fitness so much. Like, if you can kind of get your mind wrapped around fitness, you can take all the stuff you learned with fitness and apply it towards pretty much all your life. And it's just a basic, it's a very easy thing to understand. It's still not easy, but it's yeah. just easier to understand than all the complexities of like life. Yeah. So, if you can, you just nail down fitness a little bit and figure that out. Well, and to be fair, I, like, I know that uh, why we were all so impressed with Paul Check is because he's been able to distill like almost everything down to like a few like major things, right? Especially fitness wise, like that to to even focus on, like when he talks to somebody, it's just like, you know, those, those three, four major things that will move you forward. And that's it. So awesome. Master those. So absolutely awesome. So, um, so some current event stuff, I know we've been bringing some current event stuff. And so yesterday, okay, you guys have seen, I'm sure if you've been on anywhere on social media, just, he, the 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 gun control debate has just gone crazy, right? People on both sides are just getting really lots of vitriol, lots of anger, lots of you know you don't care about the kids, no, you don't care about the kids, and you don't you know this that and the other, and you got one side saying we need to uh, arm you know teachers or we need to have police you know at our schools, and you got another side that's like ban all guns or ban these guns or whatever. So I'm looking at this and I love this discussion because not because we have to have it because it's a difficult discussion to have, but because uh, there are some interesting points that you can be that can be made on both sides. So I'm kind of you know I'm mulling it over. I'm actually discussing it with Jessica. We're having a great discussion over it, and then I get on get come upon this article with these uh, these they're not biohacker. I think they're biohackers. They're kind of like biohackers, right? And biohackers are this this new group of people, and it's just like this broad umbrella of people who like to experiment with themselves and create new things that they can do with their bodies and what they can do with technology. And I'm reading this article on how um, 3D printers, so th- for the people that don't know, a 3D printer can print uh, objects. So rather than printing on a piece of paper, it can print like a cup out of plastic mold or the advanced 3D printers now can print parts for things that you put together. Or even, they even have these massive 3D printers that can print a house now out of like single um, uh, compounds or whatever, right? So I'm reading this article and there's these hackers that are using 3D printers and they're printing guns and they're printing effective guns. That's already happening. Ah, Oh, yeah. Okay, so there was one called the Liberator that you could print with plastic Wow. Yes. So it's undetectable? With plastic and I think one metal part or maybe no metal parts. So it's all plastic. It was a single shot pistol. 
and you could print it with a 3D printer that you could buy. Yeah, that's crazy. You could buy there's these commercial 3D printers you could buy, and you could print it the single shot uh, handgun. And that happened a few years ago. Well, now 3D printers have advanced so much over the last few years that now these guys are printing multi shot guns. And one guy printed a semi automatic. Uh, rifle with like a, a capacity so for like what? Crazy, dude. what like a it's twelve a, like wow. twelve. Dude, you just made me think. Of, you said you grazed over something that just made me go whoa. If we could get to a point where we can print houses, and that's like a project that yeah. can be done in two days with a little bit of material, the house it will fucking flip the housing market. Crazy. Out. I've already seen uh, some of these. Uh, I don't know if they have robots attached or whatever to these three D printers, but I've saw them like live build a bridge. Yep. Crazy. Yep. So 3D people don't realize this, but in the future, 3D printing has the ability to disrupt. Just it's going to be the most one of the oh, most everything. Di- disruptive All technologies. All engineering, yeah, everything. It'll be one of the most disruptive technologies that mankind has ever seen. Yeah. But in terms of guns, these guys are printing guns, and the way that they're doing it is they're just sharing files. Okay, now think about that. And, and the materials to make these guns, you could buy at any fucking hardware store, right? Right. So think about it this way now. Uh, how powerful is the music and entertainment industry? One of the most powerful in the world, right? Billions of dollars. Extremely powerful. Have they been able to stop no. illegal file sharing for music and movies? Yeah, not no. at all. Not at all. In fact, I could go online right now. So what you're saying is like nobody's going to be able to make money. What I'm what I'm trying to say is no, nobody's going to stop it. Is what well, it is. Yeah, no, it it doesn't matter. That. Even if you ban all guns, good luck. Good, yeah, good luck. Yeah. So we'll just you know what. And if anything, it'll only cause a more of an uproar of underground. You can make it as illegal market. as you want, right? Yeah. Like right now, it's illegal to download music or whatever. But if I want to, right now, look. By the here's the thing. I am not tech savvy. I've never, I've never had free music. I've never shared free music. I never used Napster. Never did any of that stuff. If I buy music, I, I go through. <laughs> well, <laughs> I pirated the I, shit yeah, out of. Yeah, I tell you, songs, I, had, I had Napster too. We did in college. We had like a list. Well, that was right in the heart of when you yeah. were a kid into music. I, just, dude. I couldn't really believe did. that you could do it. You yeah. know, like we all took turns like downloading songs. You know, but whatever. Everybody did, right? I bet I could go right now on my phone and I can within ten minutes find a way to download a free music or even a free movie, and those are extremely regulated and controlled industries like guns are going to be printed and you ain't going to be able to stop the sharing of files. Like right. the, like you are the toothpaste is out of the tube. You can't put it back in the tube. What the fuck are right. you going to do now? Right. So, you can't do anything when people can print guns. It's going to be like good luck trying to do gun control, anything. So yeah. when I hear the arguments for gun control and there's the debate back and forth, then I read this and I'm like, that's Whoa, a whole that's nother futile. monster, dude. That's a whole nother monster. It's futile. Like the only way we're going to be able to d- deal with that kind of a situation is that if it ever becomes super dangerous, which I disagree because we already have, like, here's, a, here's a fact, right? You don't know, forget about mass shootings and this and that because I, I think there's some crazy psychological dysfunction that goes on with that. But let's just look at everyday uh, violence uh, that's done in America. Gun violence, murders, right? Go to Chicago. Chicago's got a murder rate that's equivalent to some third world countries. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, when you've got stuff like that going on, you're, and there's already three, over, there's easily over 300 million guns already in circulation in America. So more guns in America, legal guns. We don't even know they're legal ones, but there's already more guns in circulation than people already. We've been well armed for, since the founding of this country, right? Just there's guns everywhere. If it ever becomes super, super dangerous, which I don't think it will, then the only option will be to carry a gun yourself, yeah. right? To defend yourself right. if that ever happens. But here's why I don't think it'll happen. We've had, we have, we've had guns forever in this country. We've got more guns today than we did 30 years ago. And total gun violence, total gun murders, and this is a real statistic, has, is at its lowest point in 30 years. So although total, although guns in society may be a contributing factor to, to to violence, which, by the way, that argument is actually disputable back and forth. I've looked at the evidence, and I would totally side with the evidence if it was clear, but it's not. But let's, but let's So if it was a big factor, it's obviously not the factor because otherwise we would be more violent total today than we were 30 years ago with right. more guns, right? So, so I think, fuck, 3D printers, printing guns. Yeah. Like, what? 
It's going to change everything. The it's whole gonna landscape. Be able to do, gonna they're going to be able to do drugs too, bro. You, I mean, they are going to be able to yeah. print molecule by yeah, molecule. Yeah, drug. You'll be able to, if you can print a fucking gun, you're going to be able to print a fucking drug, a pharmaceutical drug, no problem. Uh, yep. Yeah. So uh, that's going to it's going to blow everything out. That's dude. why I think the future is uh, the future is anarcho capitalism. It's gonna whether be we crazy. like it or not. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be like total so decentralized. Yeah. Like, think about brands. And this is why I believe so much People's in the blockchain. Houses are going to look all This is why I believe so much in blockchain uh, and crypto, well, because- this, so Either that or something like it. Well, yeah, that, the, the blockchain, that's why I said blockchain and not cryptocurrency, right? What what cryptocurrency, I can't tell you that, and that's why I don't think it's something smart to heavily invest in, but pay attention, because blockchain is here to stay, and it's going to be for reasons like this, is because there will be people like ourselves- that will, will I'll have no problem having a quarter of my income in cryptocurrencies that gives me the freedom to buy, purchase whatever I want, whenever I want, and protect it to where nobody can trace it back to me, and I can have what I, you know, what I'm saying like that's that's fucking here, dude. Yeah. Yep, that's that's here, and that's it's it's gonna dude, happen. Everything's gonna be so decentralized. Everything, like you know, brands. Who the fuck cares about brands when I can print a pair of shoes that's identical at home, and I just get the raw materials that are cheap as shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Who cares about like like you said, medicine? It's going to be all about design. I mean, think about the creativity, like uh, how that's going to be more important mm -hmm. going forward because people are going to have to construct new things, new ideas, new ways of building things. So, I think there's going to be a lot of demand for people that have that kind of a skill. Oh, set. of course. It, okay, so let's. I said that the house thing would flip the housing market on its head. It would just change the profession. Yeah, like now there'd exactly. be a huge market for people who could create and design these like sick houses. Architects. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So the, the and it would be decentralized. Right. Because all these files would be shared online. It would be no different than YouTube decentralizing entertainment. Mm -hmm. You'd all of a sudden have like, you know, at home designers design something. They'd test it and be like, oh, this works. You can download this if you want and print your own house on your own land. Yep. And people will people will do it. How about this? So I had somebody I had this car, this conversation with someone who's like, "Oh no, it's going to be, you know, then that that means the printer owners are going to be the fucking rulers of the world." And I'm like, "No, fucker, cuz you'll be able to 3D print a 3D printer. Like you'll be able to that's the thing, like you'll be able you to can start, print a printer. <laughs> you'll be able to print that's it. Dude, yeah, that's think like about inception. it. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's going to be so disruptive. I don't even think we can come close to imagining. <laughs> so fucking, that is inception, bro. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you'll be able to change the, the program. Chicken or the egg, whatever. I got a 3D printer. Bro, you'll be able to change <laughs> the program, yeah. and it'll 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 uh, improve upon the previous program, and then you'll print now it. Now, how crazy it will that be? Like, so you said drugs, but what if they get, you know, obviously, I'm sure they're working on bio. Uh, so, oh, they've printed tissue yeah, like off you of can, stem cells. Yeah, you can, like, make, like, new limbs for yourself they've actually and, printed um they oh, can print crazy. tissue they can they there'll be a point where they'll be able to print uh complex organs yeah like a heart yeah or well you know not the brain maybe at some point but i don't think now but they'll be able to print uh uh you know like your kidneys or a heart or a valve or a tendon yeah. or so they'll be able to harvest your stem cells oh you tore your acl we'll make you a new acl from your own stem cells and they'll print it right with this machine and then they'll put it in your body. It's your own fucking cells. Boom. Now you're brand new. Wow. It's a, it's a bunch of crazy shit, but yeah, it took me down that path. Cause this is all, <laughs> this is all like, si I get so excited about this stuff. Cause this is like totally sci-fi, but, but, but right. it's like real life now. No, it's like, it, what the fuck? It's very much so. But and it, you know, I, it's so funny how our brains work because it's like, it's yeah. a gun control battle and it's like, <laughs> I'm not even thinking about it. See, oh, that, dude, there's that's so like, many things. But that's like immediate. Coming. That's yeah. immediate. Gun control is around the corner right. or, or printing guns is around the corner. We are literally within it's 10 like years. It's like putting a little patch on, you know, one little crack in the dam. Yeah. You know, it's like, Ooh, I'm going to put some spackle on here right yeah, and, cool. then, and then debating and arguing yeah, if it's great worth it or not worth it's gonna it, right? explode yeah. in your face or what kind of spackle you should use that's yeah. like, that's what you're seeing right that's, now that's it dude and, and other countries are going to be doing it so all these countries that are like we don't have guns in our societies okay we'll see what happens <laughs> Holy we'll shit. see what happens in 10 years right because it's within 10 years it's not it's not that's how close it is bro and within 10 years we're gonna have 3d printers 10 years easily <sighs> Easily. You know how fast that shit's advancing right now? It's have they, silly. Have they um, like moved up the date for that like uh, AI where they think that it's going to become like self-aware? Well, that's uh, the, the futurist, what's his name? Oh. Ray, Ray Kurzweil thinks it'll happen like 20 Well, let me, let me throw this in the mix. So you know that China has actually made a massive initiative to be the first. 
And so they're they're treating it like we did like going the to rocket the moon. Race? Oh yeah, yes, <laughs> this is the new arms yes, race. They just put that out in the media and said that like like they have everybody working on it right now. It's the Cold War, dude. All I'm over like, again. That, that that sent a chill down my spine. Wow, yeah. really? Yes. No shit, I didn't see that. Oh yeah, it's, I'm telling you, dude. It's real. I'm telling you right now, we are either going to save ourselves or we're going to completely destroy ourselves. That's the yeah. argument too as to why. Why we haven't encountered like uh, intelligent life? One of the one of the arguments is well, maybe the process is intelligent life ends up destroying itself before it's able to uh. reach a technology where it can travel interstellar this way. Like maybe this is just a natural like yeah. we get so smart and we just push, 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 and then we end up like destroying ourselves somehow, and then it just recycles. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. It's pretty fucking. It's pretty it's so wild, weird. right? It's too weird. It's man. weird shit. Yeah. Did you say you had a headline or something, Justin? Oh, I just had a funny article that I thought like you specifically would appreciate, Sal. Oh, great. Uh, Was it sardines? Given given your background. Oh. Um, so here's the here's the uh, news title for it: Pennsylvania man with red sauce on his face arrested for meatballs theft. What? <laughs> 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 apparently, apparently, okay, so a Pennsylvania man was caught red-faced after a neighbor reported a stolen pot of meatballs, and uh, he was arrested for trespassing and theft charges. Basically, he just like walked into this guy's house, stole his meatballs, <laughs> ate it really quick, got it all over his face and his shirt, so they caught him red-handed. Dude, <laughs> yeah. you imagine trying to de- deny that to the cops? <laughs> Just dripping off yeah. your face. Who like, calls the cops over stolen right? meatballs? Come on, man. Yeah. You know what, meatballs? though? Think about it. This guy, when did, if someone came into your house and ate your food, I'd fucking be... Oh, I would be pissed. I'd be super mad. It's, dude, and it takes... Yeah, like, but don't I you, explain the process of making meatballs, right? Yeah. That's a whole process. It's death. probably a neighbor. You would, we, would, yeah. we don't know the backstory. The, back, the backstory is it's the neighbor. They've been living there for four years. He's been asking the motherfucker that has the meatball to, it. to mow his lawn. <laughs> he hasn't mowed his lawn in four weeks. Yeah. He's like, you don't mow your lawn, I'm going to eat your meatballs. Or like he's <laughs> let his dog just shit on yeah, his yeah, lawn. Yeah, yeah, like his, his dog shits on his lawn. He's like, your yeah. dog shits on my lawn one more time, I'm going to eat your meatballs. I'll teach you a lesson. I'm going to eat your fucking meatballs. this reminds me. This reminds me of I would story. do some shit like that, dude. So this yeah. reminds me of a story. I had a <laughs> like client, and meatballs. then I get caught and arrested. You know, <laughs> fuck. Oh, I had a client once who had his house burglarized, and he was telling me the story. And he goes, "Here's the worst part." He goes, "I had a sandwich in the refrigerator, and the fucking burglars not only robbed my house, but they ate half my sandwich and drank some of my beer and left them on the counter." Oh man. <laughs> Like the nerve, you know it's shooting you know how badly you I, off. You know yeah. How, yeah, how angry would like, you that be? That was my sandwich. You know what's even more bullshit is that the cops don't do any investigation on that. Like this isn't fucking CSI where oh, yeah. they, no, they no, get no, like a no, saliva no, no, no. and a hair sample for some stolen TVs, dude. Right. I remember the first time I figured that out was when I, my first car got stolen. Like I've had two cars stolen from me, right? In this, in the within a ten year span. Yeah, you're like the cops. That reminds me of that oh. movie. He goes like, "You guys have any leads or anything?" He's like, "Leads? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. leads. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's like that. They don't yeah. fucking." Do nothing about no. that, dude. Like, no. oh, t- someone breaks in your house, steals your, steals all your shit, bro. Cops roll up, they're like, they don't give a fuck. Yeah, we didn't catch him. No, we no. Don't, we're not, and we're not gonna try either. They Wait a second, care. he let the sandwich here. He ate half, and I'm sure there's a hair somewhere in this. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, <laughs> not, <laughs> ain't fucking with that. Not unless you're like, get his DNA, <laughs> the yeah. president, or something like that. Uh, God, what, what a shitty feeling, by the way. Did you yeah. feel that way, though? I thought that's how it worked as a kid. Yeah, like, man. Until my first experience was something like, yeah, like do like, some detective work. Like, like yeah. I understand, like I don't know, maybe something small. Like a like a bike being stolen, maybe. But if like a car, like a twenty something, thirty thousand dollar vehicle gets stolen, like you don't yeah. even no investigation happens. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah, they don't have time for it. I no, guess. that's the that's a shitty feeling, isn't it? When my house got broken into, I became so vigilant for like a year. Like afterwards, I was like this asshole was like looking oh, at everybody bat next to your yeah. bed and shit. Oh yeah, dude. I know. Some I bought old a- lady walking by with a dog, and he's like, "It was you." Yeah, dude. I bought a sword. This is how. <laughs> this is how- <laughs> This is how crazy I was. I bought it first. I bought first. I that's got my first. You know why you're crazy? Buy a sword? Yeah, that's your first thought. No, no. Uh, for, uh, first, I bought a gun. Okay, so I had my first. This when I first bought my gun. Yeah. So I had a gun, and then I'm like, you know what? And I locked it up. I put it in a safe because I have kids, right? I want to be very you right, know, right, safe right. about that. I'm like, what if I don't have time to grab my gun oh, in yeah. the safe? That's you know a machete. That's like move. seven feet from me, right? Yeah. So I bought this. I don't know what the fuck. Amazon. Samurai sword. Yeah, it's like a big old. Bro, like I bought the sword and I have it next to my bed. And then I thought to sword. myself, dude, then I thought to myself, would I have the balls to like, like hack chop someone? somebody? <laughs> like how gruesome would that be? Like imagine if you had a sword. Oh my God. There's a guy in your house 
and you know I have to kill him with the sword right now. Like he's just like, oh, big mistake. Yeah, yeah, you're a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Slice. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. I could stab somebody, bro. Dude. It's not like the movies where yeah. you're like, you're like yeah. I could shoot somebody who's an invader, no problem. Like if you come in one and, time, right? yeah, right, and you're coming at me, like I, I could feel like I could react quick enough if I shoot you, but yeah. to stab, that's I, like I, buying ninja. I don't stars, know. You like, know, what? I say, I say that too, and I do remember being scared as a kid getting into fights too. And then once you were in it, it's like you're, yeah. you have a switch. But that here's the thing: goes like, off a of survival. Here's the thing: I was thinking, I, I literally went through this in my head. Well, that's I, why I leave my clubs near the door. Yeah. Like, oh, your, your workout clubs? Indian clubs. Well, think about this. I'm thinking like in my I'm head, like bludgeon somebody. I'm like, I need to be <laughs> mentally prepared if this ever happens, because I don't want to be caught. Like, oh my yeah. god, and then what do I do? So I need to like, right. I need to make up my mind in my head that I can do this. I feel like so every I'm, man goes through this. Yeah. So I'm running through the scenarios in my I head, agree. and if I had a sword, I'm like, the odds that the first swipe is just going to kill him. Yeah. Or not that high. He's probably going to block <laughs> it with his arm, which means I'm probably going to, like, I'm going to have to cut in him a bunch of times. Like, I'm going to have to hack at him. Oh, yeah. He's going to re, his arms are going to block. So he's going to, like, at least grab part of it. And then you have to pull back. Yeah. It's not going to be a one swipe. It's going to be ugly. Dead. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be bloody, yeah. scary. I, I have to be dedicated. You hear the slicing Dude. of his skin. Ooh. Unless you come in overhead <laughs> and you stab forward. See? You know, just. I don't yeah, know you, if it's that easy. Have you ever done it? I've never done it. No, of course not. It's not you know that easy. There's no way. I it's, feel you're like. Pull it off. I feel like it's way more work than you think. And yeah. you have to be like. The whole time have to be committed to like yeah. neutralizing the threat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know, and he, I'm sure he's not going to sit there and take. Well, it. this I is think it's more just scaring the fuck out of him. This is why practicing and doing like I mean martial arts or doing these practices with stuff like that, so it becomes routine, right? You just go into sport mode. Oh, you just go to, into yeah. like I get in my stance and I know this is what I'm supposed to do. Damn, yeah. dude. Yeah. So much of it's mental. I just know it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, but you I had a sword. You know bro? what? If you're <laughs> a sword, if, man. If it's into your house and you're Papa Bear and you've got your kids, bro, I'm sure like Oh, if I saw that my kids were there, yeah. I wouldn't even think. Right, right. But I would feel t I still would feel afterwards I'd be like, "Wow, that was traumatizing." Yeah. I just fucking murdered someone in my oh house. Oh my god. Cuz Yeah, thought, there was there was a story of like some guy that had like broken in. Like it, this wasn't even in close to my neighborhood or anything, but it was like close enough where I paid attention, you know, it was Santa Cruz County. Some guy like broke in, like grabbed some toddler and was just like like mentally disturbed and like grabbed it and then came put put back the toddler and then they caught him later. Oh. But like just that story alone, like because I have my kids sleep downstairs, you know, and I'm just like thinking about it, and like and so a couple times I heard something rustle outside, like this is after this happened, <laughs> <laughs> jumped out of bed, grabbed my club, went out like rah, you know, like ready to to throw down. Bro, but you'd just, have to beat I, someone to death with a club. That requires some. I work. wonder what I, I wonder go right to the face. Yeah. What age is for you guys as parents, if ever, that you you relax about that or calm down? Like, at what age do do your boys or your girls need? to get before you guys are okay with it they're just downstairs right dude but i don't know man. i could get it right now and yeah. where you live out kind of in the forest and it's yeah. like you know so probably I, when your boys are big enough to like protect you yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah. when you're old and they're when they're bigger they're like stronger than me yeah and you're like there's a noise you call your son hey <laughs> go check this i out. heard a noise hey my <laughs> hip hurt, hurts you know yeah. can you handle this one <laughs> yeah for my daughter yeah. probably never right yeah. i'll always be like overprotective yeah with that anyway yeah, for sure <laughs> being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Our first question is from Alejandro Sanchez. Takes photos. You guys have talked about post-workout eating before, but are there any benefits for fasting or waiting to eat for a couple hours after working out? Absolutely. So for a long time now, we've been sold the idea that mm. one of the most important things you could possibly do for building muscle or burning body fat. That is, protein window. Yeah, is to eat right after you work out. Who was it that we were interviewing or we were talking to that first that, 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 that this blew my mind when we brought this they brought this up was it Ruscio? Ruscio talked about it in the context of uh when was it we all health. we were all together when we, the first time that someone, That's what it was with gut health. It was with uh -huh, him, right? For gut mm -hmm. health. Um but before that, you know, we all were all of us had talked about on the show that the science actually 
doesn't show that it's that big of a deal at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were we already were talking shit about yeah. meal timing a long time ago, but that was like the the big one after yeah, I heard that. Absolutely. So right. so this the the reason why they push it so hard, you have to understand this. The reason why it's pushed so hard is such an important thing is because they know that right after your workout, so here's the case. This is the case they make. After your workout, you you're in this anabolic window that lasts about 30 minutes to an hour. If you eat something right afterwards, your body's going to utilize it for repair and rebuilding, and you're going to build more muscle as a result. So that's step one. Step two, the faster you can get amino acids into your bloodstream, the better, because now it feeds into the first part, which is you need to eat right afterwards, right? So that all feeds into, oh, what's the fastest form of protein I can consume, and what is the most convenient form of protein I can consume? Protein powder. Mm. And this the reason why they push this so hard is because they knew – that if they push this narrative and they attach it to something that you're going to do, like working out, that you are going to take more protein powder. Yeah, and they were right. Product. And they were right. Yeah. This narrative right here sells more protein powder than anything I can think of by right. far. Right. Is that I need something right after my workout, so I need convenience. I don't want to – I just finished working out, so it's got to be easy. And I want it to be fast digesting because I need to get the amino acids in my bloodstream. So they've sold a shit ton of protein powder as a result of this. Now, here's the real science. The science shows that if you plan on working out again later in the day, you're definitely going to want to have a meal in between to replenish glycogen and improve performance. If you don't plan on working out until tomorrow or whatever, as long as you eat sometime between those two meals, you're going to be okay. So, And I would argue there's more benefits to, to pushing out and not eating if you're somebody who's trying to lean out. Especially for fat loss. Right. right. If you're a fat loss or, try, or even trying to lean out, even if your your main goal just isn't to build. Like if you're on a hard gain, that's I got to gain, I'm a skinny kid, all I yeah. care about is gaining. Okay, I might not push the fast or tell you to do that, but anybody who could reduce body fat, I would say there's, there's as much benefits for you stretching out the mm-hmm. fasted state after the workout than you trying to th- shuttle food down your mouth within 30 minutes of the of the workout. Absolutely. And then in the context of gut issues, if you have uh, an inflamed gut, which a lot of us have, and consider this, like exercise itself is uh, creates inflammation, okay? It's a stress on the body. It's why your body ado- adapts. It's it's trying to become re- more resilient so that next time the same, you know, stress or the same insult doesn't cause the same problems. So exercise itself, if we if you were to work out real hard and then we were to test your blood and test all your you know, all your metrics, we would find, you know, elevated inflammatory markers, elevated cytokines, elevated C reactive protein, because it's causing damage on the body and your body adapts, gets stronger, and that's what makes you healthy. But in the in that state of inflammation, may not be the best time to eat right away, especially if you've already got gut issues, because the inflammation that you're experiencing post workout is local to the muscles you train, but it's also systemic. Your whole body experiences some inflammation. And if and when your gut is inflamed and if it's already in kind of bad shape, eating food in that state is a you're asking for trouble because now you have an inflamed gut. Uh, you already kind of have gut issues. Now you're inflamed from your I'm workout. Just perpetuating the problem. Yeah, now I'm eating all this food. And by the way. And then when you have a food that is a, a religious food that you eat every single time after you work out, you're more likely to have a response. Create an intolerance to right. it. And not only that, but uh, exercise is sympathetic, it's not parasympathetic. So now let's take it a step further. Before your workout, you have some kind of a stimulant caffeine, coffee, or a pre workout. So now I'm really chemically putting my body in this fight or flight sympathetic state, which is beneficial for your workout, right? It's going to give you a better workout. Not beneficial for digestion though. Digestion is literally parasympathetic. It's the opposite. It's the rest and digest. So now I'm sympathetic from all the stimulants and I just worked out, which is sympathetic because it's put, it's hyping my body up and I'm inflamed and I throw food down my gullet. Not necessarily the best idea. I love saying gullet. Yeah. Not exactly the best idea if you have, you know, gut issues and stuff. So what do you do? Well, um, I think the best thing to do would be to wait about an hour post-workout. But if you're one of these, I love having my shake post-workout or I love eating post-workout um, and I do work out later or I do like the quick recovery from it and I'm, everything else is maximized. My diet's perfect. My sleep is perfect. My workout's perfect. So I'm trying to maximize every little detail and you want to have something post-workout. What I recommend is... If you do eat, make sure you eat something that is not inflammatory or eat something that's anti-inflammatory. One of the most anti-inflammatory foods you can consume, and that's also great for your gut. In fact, it's recommended 
quite commonly for uh, people with uh, irritable bowel syndrome or Crohn's disease or you know, like really, really bad digestive issues. Turmeric. Turmeric. Yes, that's Turmeric is a great one. So what I, you know, what I would recommend is either you can either buy raw turmeric, which is gross, yes. uh, or you could have food that's seasoned with a shit ton of turmeric, which takes time or whatever. Or what you could do, and it's very inexpensive, is you could buy high quality turmeric powder in a, su- in a supplement form, which Organifi sells a very high quality turmeric. It's organic. Mm-hmm. It's tested to be pure. You can take their pure turmeric capsules with your protein shake post-workout or with your food post-workout to reduce the inflammation, to reduce the chances of de- developing gut issues and probably enhance recovery because you're reducing some of the inflammation. Mm. You're going to heal a little bit faster, especially if you're working out pretty hard and pushing the limit. Or you could do the other thing, which is take the gold, the, the Organifi gold juice, which is a lot of turmeric, lemon balm, and some other anti-inflammatory things, which will also help induce parasympathetic yeah. recovery. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of hacking it, right? Like, so what do you think about doing that? Would you still recommend waiting, though, longer longer than 30 minutes? I think you waiting about an hour post-workout is probably better for more, for more people than not. But if you're one of these people you like, Eating post workout because I you know I'm one of those people sometimes like after a hard workout I don't know what it, maybe I'm conditioned like one of my favorite things to do after a hard workout is have a big meal it just feels like oh you know I'm- well I condition myself because I I needed to get enough meals in to get enough calories in mm-hmm. so when I was especially when I was younger not so much now it's different now especially if I'm not moving around like I am I'm not right now but when I'm on the gain and I'm trying to build muscle and I'm moving around especially when I was training clients. You know, getting 5,000 calories in on a regular basis is just, that's not easy, especially when you're trying to make whole food choices. Yeah, try skipping meals and doing that. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Try that, That's like three, you know, 1,700 calorie meals or something ridiculous. It, yeah, like exactly. And who's going to eat three 1,700 calories? That's, inc- <laughs> that, that's whole foods. That's yeah. crazy. So, yeah. you know, I'm trying to shoot for these yeah, eight, 800 to 1,000 calorie type meals, and I'm still consuming four or five meals minimum that way. For me, it used to be like as soon as I work out, I'm I was naturally hungry, and so I want to eat as soon as I can eat because I want to turn around and eat again in two hours because I'm still trying to get meal number four and five in of the day, and that's where I think that's the only people that I I understand why you would get uh, where you're trying to push this five and six meal thing. Like I don't get having six, you know, two hundred something calorie meals. Like that's just. Ideal. That's crazy to me. Like from, that, from what I've studied or from what I've read in, in the literature, I would say the ideal post workout meal would consist of obviously some protein, some carbohydrates uh, to you know replenish glycogen and have amino acids. So I would like white rice because white rice is easy to digest or buckwheat, some gluten free. I would do a form of protein. Um, you can do a protein powder, but if if you do do a protein powder, go for organic minimally processed type powder. Organifi, again, makes a really good protein powder. I have the most sensitive gut, and it's one of the few protein powders I can consume and not have any issues. Um, and here's the other thing, cholesterol post-workout. Excellent for recovery. Your your blood cholesterol drops considerably post-workout because your body's using up that cholesterol for mm-hmm. rebuilding, for repairing, because that's what cholesterol is. It's like this molecule used to build and repair things and, and, and create hormones. Theoretically, consuming a high cholesterol meal post workout, probably a good idea. So, like some egg yolks, some chicken, some rice, and then throw in some anti inflammatory, you know, foods, either like fish oil and maybe turmeric or the gold juice. If you're really dialing everything in, would probably be a good idea. I bet you that sounds so incredibly shocking to people still. I know. Like that, that, that's like this, <laughs> you, what you just said there is like a, a complete contradiction from everything they've known. Dude, if you, if you, it's just a, it's a scientific fact, test your cholesterol, go work out real hard, test it right afterwards. You will have a, yeah. a significant drop in your number. In fact, if you want to cheat on your cholesterol test, let's say you're going to go get life insurance and they're going to test you for your blood because they want to see what your cholesterol levels are and they'll, they'll, they'll judge your, you know, cause that's what they do. They take your blood, they do all these tests and then based off that, they'll give you your rate Right before your test, go do a hard ass workout. Have them test, and they'll be like, "Oh, triglycerides look good, cholesterol looks good." Like people don't realize that that number is, it, it changes. Varies. Yeah, it totally yeah. varies depending yeah. on. But yeah, post workout cholesterol, man, that was a game changer for me when I push my body to the limit. Have some egg yolks or some chicken liver or something like that, and it's like you yeah. just you feel you it. You feel that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vince Garanda, old school bodybuilder, used to promote that back in the day. Next question is from Man Unkind Thirteen. 
We often hear to mix up our exercise routines because our bodies adapt very quickly, as in weeks. With that same logic, why haven't our bodies adapted to highly processed foods in the last hundred years? That's never made sense to me. The human body is very quick to adapt, but please keep eating the foods that we ate thousands of years ago if you want to be healthy and free of disease. Well, you're talking about two different systems. Totally. Yeah, you're talking about two two different things when you're talking about your body adapting to this physical stress that you're putting on it that's pretty consistently the same as yeah. far as what you're doing to chemicals and things that we've created. And I know Lane likes to fucking, everything's a chemical. Well, processed, fake food. That things didn't, we've never been introduced yeah, to. Yeah, that our, food, our bodies have never been introduced for hundreds, thousands of years. It's totally different. Totally. It's totally different. We've only been consuming hi- highly processed foods in large quantities for the last... 40 to 50 years max. Right. Maybe we will be adapted in 2,000 more years and we're going through some shitty ass growing pains right right now. (laughs) First off, it takes thousands of years for uh, these kind of, like for example, the, our ability to adapt to resistance training is what is itself an evolution that took thousands of years. Like humans adapted thousands of years to be able to have the ability to adapt to resistance training to build or resistance in general to build muscle. So that in, in, in and of itself you're not uh, you're not understanding how long it took the body humans to adapt to have that evolutionary process that now we can adapt to resistance. Now our ability to adapt to highly processed foods, fuck this shit's it's a blink of the eye. There's only been like th- maybe two or three generations that have had to deal with this, and so give it some time. And we're slowing down the evolution process. You know why? Yeah. Because we keep ourselves we keep al- everybody alive, alive long enough to make kids, right? Like the well, that's the thing. It's like the evolutionary process. If we're able to then adapt and go forward, <laughs> usually the lineage or, or the genes like don't keep passing on, but we keep passing on the ones that aren't successful. That's right. That's right. So if it's like uh, you know, if we weren't like keeping us our, uh, us alive for long enough to reproduce, then you might see it happen a little bit faster. But I think. I think there's so let the weak die. I think there's evolution. <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah, there's there's adapting that happens within your own body when you eat certain foods that are you know micro, like micro adaptions, but that's different than evolution. Evolution takes a long time. Like if we keep eating this way and we don't figure out what we're what, you know how to fix this, at some point I'm sure you're going to probably have people that are more resilient to like diabetes, more resilient to obesity related illness and stuff like that because the other ones are dying off yeah you won't be breeding with them and if you if we keep going this direction you're right we could just keep going this way and we probably will still evolve the weak ones will die off the ones that are resilient enough will breed with the other ones that are resilient enough and will breed it out of us potentially but i certainly if i have if i'm already battling some of the shit like i'm not gonna just wave the white flag yeah Yeah. dude i'm fighting this shit if that means i gotta make choices like eating whole foods more than processed shit all the time like okay i'm willing to make that's back to the earlier t- topic today, which is this, you know, I'm having, I'm bargaining with my future self, mm-hmm. you know, and for me, it's as much as that instant pleasure of throwing candy in my mouth is, if it's, you know, if I can sacrifice that to have a healthier, better version of myself in the future, like I'm making that choice, right? Yeah. At least I'm going to try and make that choice 90% of the time. I used to have this book when I was a kid. It was so cool, right? And it was this artist rendition of what aliens would look like on the planets in our solar system be, uh, based on the environments of the, oh, the planets, right? So yeah. like, you know, this planet is covered in ice, so then there'll probably be animals with like natural ice skates and all these different things. And then in the book, it it showed what this artist thought humans would evolve to based on, like if we allowed natural evolution to happen, how would humans look a thousand years from now with technology and stuff? Yeah, And it was this really obese like blob <laughs> with this like intelligence that allows us to process lots of information. So a big head, big head, really overweight on a hover craft. So our legs shriveled yeah. because we don't need legs anymore. We're floating around everyone. We have these, these kind of weak looking arms, but with these really long fingers because we're always pushing buttons yeah. like with technology, it was fucking grotesque. When I was a kid, it freaked me out. <laughs> I was like Ew. 10 years old and I looked at it. That is creepy. Like, oh my God, we're going to look like that. No, it, it takes a long time to evolve. I, I don't I don't think, and you know what? Processed foods change so fast anyway. Like 
they keep inventing new shit to make it taste different and whatever. At some point, they keep what they keep doing is it's like the the old uh, supplement hustle is they keep inventing shit till we find out oh shit uh, that's not yeah. good for you. Oh, well, it says long term effects. Oops. Let's yeah. try another compound that's just a little bit different, but it's kind of the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's a different name and it hasn't been banned and put bunch. It's not hasn't got a bad bunch of bad pub from it yet. That's the hustle, dude. How when's the last time have you guys ever tasted those uh, like vegan? meat products recently have you ever tasted them no man okay. why would i so i <laughs> yeah, it's, it's i had a horrible I'm idea i haven't done it recently but about a few years ago one of uh the people that worked at my gym bought this like vegan burger patty okay right and i it totally tastes like a burger well here's the weird thing i can tell the difference but boy, did they fucking engineer that thing yeah i'm eating this i'm like this is made out of plants this is this tastes just like a burger meatish yeah. Like that's some serious I can't imagine like in fifty years what they're gonna be able to create in the lab, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're gonna be able to make so like this is like pe- no trust me, no dairy, no gluten, whatever. Tastes just like pizza. You know, pack full of nutrients and it's got all the macronutrients you need and you're gonna bite into it. And bite. We're already hacking in there with like the cauliflower pizza and stuff Dude, like that. Yeah. I mean that shit, that stuff is I'm I prefer that now. Yeah. yeah. I actually prefer that that it settle it sits to me way better, dude. Oh. Well, look at the. That's just the recipe, though, dude. Yeah. What, yeah. yeah. What about bars? Like, how crazy have they gotten? Yeah. Do you guys remember how bars used to taste when we were kids? Oh, I know. Ugh, chalk. Uh, remember Power Bar when that first came out? It was fucking. Oh shit! Garbage. I used to eat that before. I remember like, basketball forcing games. myself because of the calories. You know, <laughs> yeah. forcing myself to eat those. Bars. When I w- when I was a kid, if, fucking cardboard. If I bought a protein powder or a, a, a weight gainer, I used to buy weight gainers all the time. The only flavor that you could ever get was chocolate because it was the only one that was. Tolerable. If you got any other flavor, like if they got like a uh, creative and they're like pumpkin spice or some shit, tasted like dog shit. Yeah. Strawberry shortcake tasted like dog shit. <laughs> chocolate was the only one that tasted kind of like chocolate. Well, nowadays, right. fuck me, you'll get a Quest bar that tastes like I know. You know that what I mean? Apple, cream. apple pie. You're like I'm this like, tastes oh like how, what do they do? Yeah, we'll see about that. We'll see yeah. about how you can uh, uh, trying to evolve the body to keep up with that. I doubt it. I think. Well, we'll- how crazy was that talking yeah. to Lisa Billu just yesterday, and you know, being a part of co-founder of Quest, and not even be able to eat Quest bars because of her gut issues. Yeah, yeah dude, like that fucking sucks. I know the irony there, yeah, right, bro? I'm telling you, I think I don't know, man. I, I, obviously, I think processed foods are playing a big role. Yeah, and all these 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 gut. It's so common now. It's so crazy to me. Yeah, yeah. You know well, I mean? it, it's so crazy to me because it's like nothing else that I can at least compare to that uh, every other industry. It's like as we get smarter, we it, things tend to evolve. Like. I mean, we are getting sicker. It's all the numbers, all the stats, everything pointing that way. But yet, we're supposed to be getting smarter, more knowledgeable about our body. Like, yeah. how the fuck is it? What you know is what? It? That 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 to me is like it's obvious. There's something wrong with the message, like big time wrong with the message. If that's where we're heading, and we know so much more, supposedly. Well, we haven't. I mean, the the, the chronic issues. I think that we're just starting to mm-hmm. address. You know, as opposed to like, yeah, we can fix people like acutely, like pretty pretty damn well. We've right. traded the two. We've yeah. traded acute d- illness for chronic illness. Yeah. I think the evolution in the future is not natural evolution. I don't. I don't think humans are going to naturally evolve. I think the evolution is going to be technological, where yeah. you're going to start. Having nanobots and shit in your body. See, and that's where my that's mind what goes. You're do. Yeah, even then, with the, you mentioned like the artists, like like rendering and obesity, like that wouldn't serve us. Nope. So then, you know, like there's going to be some kind of like 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 nanobot oh, or something I, that's going to adjust your metabolism and exactly. all that shit. I, I, imagine it being able it's to up- be so easy for upload us. right yeah. to right in front of you and tell you like what what systems are doing bad on your body. Like you know, yeah. cardiovascular system is starting to decrease. It's running at sixty percent optimization. Like you. Could, it goes each one Everything's of your systems be automatically regulated for you, and you're not even going to think. Which we're going to just turn turn into like uh, slaves to this technology. Dude, at some think point. about these nanobots. You could like have an, you know, you could eat something and then throw in some nanobots that are going to make the, you know, the sugar, you know, affect your pan- pancreas stuff. Or fuck it, the, right. they, it'll they, shuttle it like when you need it specifically. It'll I, hold on to it otherwise. Oh, you know? it's going like, to be whatever. That's what I think it's going to be. That's yeah. where the evolution is going to come from. And then maybe who knows? Maybe yeah, we're, we're fucking. We yeah, we're, like we're inherently lazy. Yeah. Maybe we'll reach a, a, a. Maybe we'll go out of business. You know what I mean? Maybe the future's like <laughs> work out. There's no, no more fitness. Well, yeah, yeah seriously, it'll be may, dinosaur. Maybe you will be able to consume some of this bad, this shit that's inside of it, and the the nanobots will be able to go in and defend this, the bad you know stuff. And then, and then you can still consume whatever the fuck you want. And you know what'll happen? Yeah. Well, yeah. That'd be crazy. You know what'll happen Dude, when people suck. when people can be fit and healthy. Without discipline, without sacrifice, yeah. they're going to find very quickly that that is not the key to happiness. 
They're going to oh, find yeah, it'll real be, fast. It'll be just like like getting you know millions and millions of dollars you know like overnight. Yeah, you know that's like, why I oh, wrote that the future is fuck it up is the division right down the middle. It's the plugged and unplugged yeah. in community. And that's the like people. a good sci-fi book. I feel like you should and, write that. <laughs> if yeah. I could write, I this is already part of my sci-fi right? book. Bro. Yeah. Oh, is it already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I might have read it. Wait, yeah. wait till it comes out. <laughs> You'll be waiting a long time. And by then it'll all have happened already. Oh man, that's exactly what I was gonna write about. You know, It'll be nonfiction. Ah, you know, my yeah. pub is struggling when we pre-sell Justin's book. Oh my god, I, I can't wait for that day, dude. I can't. Wait. What would you call Justin's it? Justin's finally coming out with his sci-fi. What's the title of series? It? Can, am I going to throw that out there? Somebody's going to steal it. Oh, forget it. I'm no, sorry. No, 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 I'll say it. All right, I'll say it. the Spectrum. The Spectrum. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's actually a cool name. It is. <laughs> He's like, I, I have know. it really well thought out. I'm running it down right now. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Don't use that. I'll know. Mind pump yeah. audience. Yeah. yeah. Next up is Steph Burns. What would you say is the correlation ratio between all of your fitness success and business success? Has this ratio changed over time? Oh, wow. Huge correlation. Cool. Huge cool. correlation. The discipline, the structure, the, you know, I put hard work in and then I see results afterwards. The learning how to deal with myself that comes, that came from fitness, 100%. Uh, translates to business success. In fact, I don't know about you guys, but every time I've trained an entrepreneur who wasn't working out before, after they start getting into working out, every single one of them comments that they're better at work oh, yeah. because they started working out. Productivity goes. This way is an out. interesting question, though, because I I have some people that I, I know a lot of people actually that have a lot of fitness success. Um, but they don't have a lot of business sense. So mm. for us, I think that ratio is very high and it translates, which is also what connects all of us and why we are good friends and like each other outside of just the business aspect is we respect everyone's business and fitness mind mm. equally. And I think that that isn't as common for everybody. I don't think that's, I think there's a, it's talking a spectrum. I think there's a wide yeah. spectrum of people that fall in all pieces here because I knew some some guys and girls that, I mean, they could dial their bodies in uh, because they understood they understood what they needed to do so well. But then they're idiots. But then business. they just had no idea about business, and you right. see it. It's it's actually pretty. Well, I think they, it's because they're myopic. Like they, that, that's all they like focus on is like really improving their body, and they don't like expand off of that. I think I've seen that with some athletes and some people that are like trying to get up on stage. It's like they're just consumed with the thought that like you know their body has to be this certain way, and then you know like the, the actual business end of it, like it kind of takes a back. Well, seat. the answers are there in that right that's the formula for yeah. success right if you even even those people that aren't aware of it they actually have the answers it's just that you got to learn to take take what they apply to get there to business also so mm -hmm. what did it take sacrifice consistency well, hard work trial right. and error you yeah. know what i'm saying failing a lot yeah, put too many eggs in that direction i don't think it's a guarantee that you're going to be like i don't think if you're like great at fitness it's guaranteed to make you good at other things, but I think the skills required mm. to be good at fitness in a real sense, not like obsessive, like, you know, bad eating disorder type. What do we mean by like skill? Well, the mentality of it translates like, very well. That's what to I business. mean. The skill yeah. of like consistency, sacrifice, like hard work, you know, um, uh, scheduling, like prioritizing, because it all requires all those things, right? Yeah. Like, like to be fit, you got to be consistent, which requires prioritizing things that are important and, you know, sacrificing, okay, I'm not going to go drink tonight because tomorrow morning I got to work out, like all these different things. And I think those skills are, there's two things. I think A, you develop them through fitness and B, people who are good at fitness might already have a propensity to, to, to be drawn towards those things. Mm -hmm. So while you were talking, Adam, I did a quick search on Google Here's five surprising statistics about entrepreneurs. Trip off this. Uh, entrepreneurs, when they do these polls, about 58% of them say they exercise at least 30 minutes a day, three times a week. Now, that's not every one of them, but that's way fucking higher than no, the average. No, that's higher than the average person who by works. Far, yeah. By far, right? Here's another one. They also, 63% of entrepreneurs eat five or more servings of produce every four days. In other words, they eat more than a single, more than a serving of vegetables a day, which is way more than the average person. They're less likely to be obese. So they're 4% less likely to be obese than managers and executives and 5% less likely to be obese than office workers. So that's significant. Um, and they 17% of, uh, but they, oh, here's the other one though, that they, they smoke more. 
entrepreneurs tend to smoke more wow. than the average person. Yeah. So I think that's more of a result of like stress. Yeah, being yeah. like I got to be on the go type of thing. Yeah. But ultimately, I think the the uh, the things that make you good at fitness, you can translate a little bit right to what makes you good at at business. And I think. If you're a an entrepreneur and you're not working out, well, what I do you think, think the ratio is for? Is he's asking us personally, right? What would you say the correlation between? Uh, yeah, which is that? How, is how has it helped changed? us personally? I guess right. How has this changed? Has this ratio changed over time? You know, I I entered fitness with more of a passion for sales and business, hmm. so I I was already into that. Even though I was heading down the kinesis direction, when I fell into fitness, the part of of the whole thing that I really was fascinated by was entrepreneurship, the company, you know, selling. I, I just the art of communication. These things I was I was more intrigued by that than I actually was of the science of fitness. Mm-hmm. Now that's not to say that I wasn't loving that too, because I was learning a lot about myself as I was going through, you know, learning as a trainer in my early years. So I definitely think that um, my ratio has changed. I I I like to think. I'm a, I'm a more of a 50-50 split now mm. where I was probably more like a 90-10 when I first came in and maybe even the first few mm. 10, 10 years or so. I've I've been a serial entrepreneur. I've always been into selling. I've always been into business. I'm, I, I like reading and watching documentaries and stuff like that. I love reading autobiographies on, on big entrepreneurs. Like This is the stuff that I really dig. I wasn't um, like Sal reads more studies and in, like that's this is where we're definitely different. Like I think that if you were to uh, like skin us back, I think our ratios and this is why we work so well is uh, where one of us may be really, really more dominant in an area like this. Of the, That's maybe where our passion is or a little less on the other. I think now, though, we're all maybe kind of a nice closer yeah. mix of I a feel ha- like I, it took me a bit to discover that I was an entrepreneur. So, you know, going through the like. I know too, like you said, fitness, but for me, fitness to me meant more like sports related. So like being on teams and, um, you know, communicating with, um, other people and becoming a leader within my role on the team and, um, like going through that sort of a journey, uh, my ratio was very much more heavily, um, focused on maybe the fitness side. And then I grew into the entrepreneurship, which now is definitely, uh, predominating, you know, like it's probably even more so than the fitness, just because that was like my foundational baseline. Like I, I built everything on top of that. Mm. And so now it's like, I, I just get so passionate now about what, where business, like what, what I'm doing business wise, where it's taking me, uh, because now I, I consider more than myself. I consider my family, I consider, um, you know, how to provide, you know, all that kind of stuff is very much more of a high priority than mm-hmm. uh, previous. It's all, for, for me, it's all about what fulfills me. So if I was, let's say I was stuck in a job that, you know, let's say I was in a situation where I needed to make money and I had to take a job that wasn't like a passion of mine, right? But I, I had to make money and whatever. I'd probably be more fitness than, than business because my fitness would be my outlet. That's what would fulfill me. But because of what we do is so fulfilling and because it's all integrated, uh, it's hard to separate the two. Like my personal fitness now, like I don't really chase aesthetics. I don't chase personal PRs really that much. It's fun when they happen, but it's not like I'm like, I'm not sitting here like, okay, this is like my, my, my number one goal. I used to be like that, you know, when I was much younger but now it's just, it's all kind of the same. Like it just fulfills me. Like I love working out because it feels good. I love the fun of it. I like the way it makes me feel. And then I love the way it helps me perform. Same thing with diet. Like yeah. when my diet is good, I'm not eating. My motivations for eating right now are I care about myself. So I like taking care of myself. And then my other motivations are when I eat like really well, I am way more effective on the podcast and way more effective on the YouTube channel, way yeah. more effective when yeah, we interview performance people. performance goes way up. Oh my, po- like- I notice a fucking night and day. Like, you, you check it out. My diet is so good before we go on trips and we're going to interview people because I know when I'm going to sit down in front of, you know, whatever. Like, we just did an interview with Lane Norton. That was amazing. Fire. but And I was sharp because I watched what I ate. I wanted to be like, I wanted to maximize my performance. And I know my mind is sharp and I get the best ideas and I think the best when I do well with my diet and nutrition. So it's a little bit different now. Um, but, it, you know... Business fulfills me in the sense that I'm maybe not so driven by money. I like the money for sure. I just like feeling like I'm 
doing something impactful. It sounds kind of what's your cliche, what's your, what's your ratio though? Like if you were to look at like tough, what you know. where you were when you first started, you know, I mean, I I think that. I think I'm like 50-50. And the way I look at it, this is the way I'm like measuring it, is like the amount of knowledge and where I'm consuming it. So like- Like what we, you're learning? Yeah. Like, so I'll say I'll, I'll say this. Like, so the last two books I read, and I don't even plan this. This is just kind of naturally yeah. where my mind is at right now. The last book, the book I'm reading currently right now is Neuroscience and Psychology. So there's kind of the fitness side of me that like is consuming yeah, that yeah, type yeah. of knowledge. But the book right before that was Rework, which is all business, right? So- and, and if you look back at all the books that I've read in the in the last year and a half, it's kind of a natural kind of split of this is what I'm consuming. I'm consuming a ton. I, besides my experience, sure, I've got years of experience in fitness. Sure, I've got years of experience in both business. Both are equally relevant. Right. But when I think of what uh, where I'm at right now personally and how that's evolved and changed, when I first started... I was heavy business, didn't know very mu- as much about fitness. I become more knowledgeable at fitness, and I've slowly sw- took that from a 90-10 ratio to kind of this 50-50 ratio, and I'm kind of maintaining that is what I would say. It's hard to say because it's not even necessarily fitness that that uh, interests me like to read about. It's just I'm interested in whatever I'm interested in. Now, do I, do I read business books? I read a lot of economics books. I don't know. It's not specifically business. It's more... It's kind of general. Like, I don't know if, how much it communicates with business. It does in a sense, but it's not specifically It, it about does business. a lot. That's the reason why you still have a very intelligent business mind yeah, I, because I, it does translate a lot in there. There's, obvi- there's obviously some yeah. benefits too to being uh, more more just on that. I'll tell you what. It's, I mean, uh, I, it's one of the, the, the reasons why I love working with you guys is we're, our interests are different but complementary. Right, right. You know? yeah, that's and exactly so, why. Yeah. I, that's exactly why I think it's really cool is that um, it probably wouldn't be as successful if everybody was kind of the like same one way or the, the other. same ratio. And I think that the answer, the bringing it all back to the question, is that <clears throat> you, I, you, I guess it's going to be different for every single person, like how they find success. I, you know, absolutely. Next question is from Jay Cisneros. If you guys get big enough, then what? How do you maintain your authenticity? Well, what does that mean? That's so <laughs> staying real, you know, being real, being, uh, you know, I know, but what, true to ourselves. What is, what is like, big enough? What's big enough? Yeah, Oprah? What's, yeah I know. What's big, what's big enough? I don't know. I, I think I, I, Katrina and I just had this conversation at dinner the other night and she asked me that. She goes something similar to what I think he's asking, which is, you know, what do you, you know, when you guys are doing like really big things and there's like tons of people and like everything you're experiencing is a hundred times more like, do you think you're going to totally change? And I'm like, well, I'm sure I'm going to change. Like, I'm, I've been changing every. You probably have to just to, right along and the way. I, right? I'm well, definitely different than when we first started. Right, right. So I said, I'm sure I'm going to change. But one of the things I appreciate, and this is again appreciating the journey, is uh, the way we have grown is different than I think uh, a lot of people uh, grow on social media. I think a lot of people create something that gets shared that's viral, and then they're attached to that. Where we've had to kind of build this thing like a legitimate business. It's taken us a very long time to get to where we're at with the staffing that we have and revenue that everyone's generating. So I think we've uh, experienced a little bit more of the success, a little bit more of the success, a little bit. It's been this nice gradual uh, progression for us. And I think uh, each time, and we've all done this, right? We've all, you know, Sal and I, after the LA Fit Expo, you know, sat in the room together and we were just like, damn, dude, that was crazy. I, I wasn't expecting that. Like, I, we didn't tell anybody. We said it like one time in the show, we'd be there. And, you know, there's people that waited in line to talk to us for an hour, dude. Like, that was that was the first time that I had really, any of us had really experienced mm-hmm. that level of it. Before that, it was, you know, other things that we noticed. And so I think that because we have slowly felt that, over time, I think we're going to remain who we are. I don't think we're, as far as our authenticity, right? Yeah. As far as our message and what we believe in and our connection to our people. And I, I don't think it would ever ch- waver our integrity. Mm. And I and I think a lot of that, because I don't know what it would be like if I was 25 years old and all of a sudden we're making, this company's worth millions of dollars and we're making all this money and all these people and we have this taste of fame. What would that feel like? I think that would be much, uh, and that's why too. I'm compassionate when I meet somebody like a Bradley Martin, who's you know only 27 years old, and he's got all this attention around him, and he's got tons of people that love him, and then he's got a lot of people that hate on him, and it's like this poor young guy, dude, is like probably never experienced anything like this, 
you know, back up five years before that. He was yeah. just a normal, normal. It's not like you can just turn that off. Right? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Could you imagine being that young and then getting that much attention right out the gates? Like, I feel like we're ready for that. Like, I think all of us, let's put it this way. None of us want that Like to the point where we always want to put people in front of us. Like, it's not about mm-hmm. us. And, and it's never it, it's never been about feeding an ego. And that's mm-hmm. why it's always worked. And I don't think that'll ever change. And so I, I think that's where we're, we're... I think part of that, too, is... It, you know, here's the thing. Like, uh, this is a subject that's uh, been of a, a passion of mine for a long time because I I'm very interested in why people behave the way they do when they get lots of powers. So I've done lots of personal study on uh, politicians and leaders and like why did you know celebrities and people who when they reach a certain level, like why do they behave the way that they behave? It's 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 insane. Like, what makes them think that? Mm. And uh, and then then you go even deeper. Look at celebrities. Look at bands that produce like incredible music, or partners that produce incredible movies. And then all of a sudden, like they fucking break up or they hate each other. And you look at it and you're like, "What are you guys doing? You guys are making great music. Why would you yeah. do that? Like you guys are so successful. Why would you sabotage it? And it's 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 the ego. Yeah. Your ego kicks in. You all of a sudden think. And I'm going to tell you something right now. As awesome yeah. as we think we are, we are not immune. In fact, it's probably better that we assume that that is a reality and that we choose not to go in that direction versus thinking I'm not capable of that because oh, yeah. I've never been in a situation like that. I've never been in a situation where all these people think everything I say is fucking awesome. I'll tell you what, I've been talking about, I've been f- debating politics forever on Facebook. Okay, It's just a passion of mine, right? All of a sudden, I'll do a, now, I'll do a post or something on my Instagram and I'm getting people commenting or, 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 or DMing me who are like, Wow, you really changed my political view, Sal. That's awesome. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, that's never happened. That's before, never. Huh? Nobody ever changes <laughs> yeah. the political, and yeah. it's because of the perceived authority. Because right. I have a podcast and whatever, and that, that can quickly go to your head now, where you think you're the fucking man and whatever. And so, the checks. Not, and not only can it, it happens a lot. It happens a lot. It happens a lot yeah. more often than not. I think again, it's going back to what I said about. I think that's where we've been lucky to have get just bits of it along yeah. the way. I mean, it would be really overwhelming to all of a sudden go for no one where no one's listening to you to where tens of thousands of people are doing whatever you tell them to yeah. do. Well, I think that it, could really fuck with somebody's yep, head. Yep. I think too, like it all depends on what you become famous for. You know, like what 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 you've established, what you know, what the mission that drove you to success versus that's like a good point. you know what like what's keeping you there, right? And so that's why I don't I don't see any problem with it. Like I used to have a real big problem with being noticed, you know, like or like the idea of having some sort of a platform and fame and like attention where I'm like, dude, I just want to be in the background. I want to be the guy that like, Mm -hmm. you know, puts somebody out there, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make a good living for myself and whatever. And I'm totally cool with that. Uh, whereas like it's changed, it's already changed because I'm, you know, I'm totally okay with it because like uh, the, the driving message, the root of, of what we're trying to accomplish is something that people, you know, will, will benefit their lives and their lifestyle. And, uh, you know, (laughs) I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty bold to say it's going to change, you know, uh, somewhat of like the way that people uh, perceive fitness and all that. But that's like that's like our goal is mm-hmm. to really like shake that up. Well, there's and, a, and it's been happening. Which there's is a, crazy. There's a couple of things that make me feel like good about this because this always worries me. I'm like, okay, I'm working with these dudes. What if shit goes fucking? We crush and it just explodes and we're massive. Like, how's that going to affect everybody's personalities and egos and all that? And there's a couple of things that give me a little bit of comfort. One is every single person on this podcast and even Doug behind the podcast, all of us are super reluctant to uh, with when it comes to fame. None of us like it, which I find fascinating. Like mm-hmm. when people recognize us and come talk to us, like we help them or whatever, but there's a little bit of like, fuck, like my anonymous, you know, I'm not anonym- uh, anonymous anymore, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I don't necessarily, like if I have my kids, I definitely don't like to be, uh, you know, uh, recognized. I don't like to, so that kind of makes me feel good. Like none of us are seeking it. I don't think any of us are doing this for yeah, fame at yeah. all. In fact, we've talked so much about how in the future we could become less of the front and you know more of the back or whatever because of that. Mm-hmm. So that makes me feel good. And the other thing that makes me feel good is we all check each other pretty well. Um, like I know for a fact if my head gets too big, I can rely like clockwork that, I'm going to get checked by somebody on my team. 100%. It's going to happen. Someone's <laughs> yeah, going to check yeah, me. Definitely. And I guarantee you, I'm going to check one of you guys oh, yeah, if course. that shit happens. <laughs> and so, 
that is going to be like the only thing that would ever worry me is if all of our heads get so fucking big that we all just blow each other <laughs> we all, over. Yeah. We all buy into the same bullshit. Yeah. Just a big circle jerk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're so cool. Oh, yachts. Yeah. That's a good idea. And, but then the third thing is that there's a higher – we always remind ourselves of the higher – purpose of what we're doing like okay this is what we're really trying to do let's just remember this just remember this just remember this and if we keep aiming towards that higher purpose it'll maintain our integrity because if we change that and it becomes about other things you can start to lose your focus and you start to chase the shiny you know the shiny object or whatever and then you change who you are i just feel like authenticity is inversely related to integrity and that's something that's been a Mm -hmm. that's been like a state we would lose everything if we lose our integrity that's what i mean that was what how we built this whole thing on like if and it's easier. It's actually easier now than it was before. I believe. I believe yeah. when we are climbing up the mountain right now and trying to be a top podcast in the health and fitness space, you know, and then we started getting these supplement companies that want to talk to us. Man, we entertained a lot of that stuff. We entertained it in our heads, like fuck. And I, and we always stuck back to our original message: is this we can't do that. This is what we share and we talk about. But then we also like, well, listen, we're going to be able to share and talk to anybody if we can't keep the fucking lights on. Mm-hmm. So right. this discussion has to be had. Like, how could we do this, or would this be a possibility? And we did a lot of that for the first year or two. And, you know, we're, we're in a position now where, you know, we know that we could sustain the business as is. And we, we don't necessarily have to grow. Now, all of us want to grow, but we could sustain it the way it is right now and not have to add any, any other pieces to it. And I think all of us agree we'd rather keep our integrity, keep our authenticity and stay the same size we are now and continue to provide better service, better stuff for the the core group that we have that are attached to us than grow to this massive size and lose our authenticity, right? That's so right. I, think, I think we are all in agreement. That's something. right, man. It's uh, it's that quote, uh, you know, what is it? Man cannot live on bread alone. Love that quote. Such a, hmm. So much wisdom in that. Like, you know, what is... Team fireproof. What is... No, man, I'm not... <laughs> yeah, stop it. Yeah, I'm, not, it. I'm not it. trying to preach. I'm not We're preaching. We're going to get you a shirt. I'm not <laughs> preaching. <laughs> Real soon here, the Bible verses are coming out. He doesn't even know it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, he starts yeah. throwing out shit. I'm yeah. like, yeah, bro, that's uh, Kings 3, 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... A, it's, a, it's actually... Did you not know that? It, it's just a wise... It's a uh, wise quote. I don't care if... I, I'm wise. not. I'm not a religious person. <laughs> but the wages of sin is death. You know? yeah. Yeah. We get it. Yeah, yeah. It's a good one. You know, what worth is money and all success and all that shit if your soul is corrupted if you're not authentic if you're fake that is actually the definition of hell and if you don't believe me look at all those celebrities with all the money and all that fame who die of drug overdoses who have three marriages and divorces and who you know kill themselves because they're too depressed like there you go right there's your evidence right there so uh, i'm not looking for money and fame unless that's a side effect of me being authentic How's that sound? There you I go. Like, no, there like you go. That. Thank <laughs> you very I'll much. Agree with that. Check it out. Go to the app store. Team download Jesus. the Team. Mind Pump app. You can actually search topics with all of our heaven. episodes. Pull them up, and they'll show you which episodes have those topics that you search. It's a cool app. It's free. It costs nothing at all. So just go to the app store. Download the Mind Pump Media app. That's right. Hashtag save Sal. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.